Hey, 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 you guys. Waiting for y'all to get on here. And for our special guest. I'm going to go ahead. It's going to be, the camera's going to be moving a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Do you see anything that's going to say, add you on camera? Bring them on camera. Now, this whole miracle. It's going to be amazing on here, like right at the beginning of the video, you guys. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, look right here. Is that not amazing? There was no fight to get our special guest on this evening. <laughs> I'm telling you, sir, uh, uh, Pastor Brian, Apostle Brian, you know, that's like a miracle on the face of the planet, it seems like. Wow. Well, how are you this evening, you and your wife? We are good. Um, thank you so much for having us on tonight. Uh, it's, so it's a blessing. I, I honor you for allowing me to, to be on with you tonight. And it uh, looks like I've got a lot of people coming in as well. Yes! Y'all share it to your page, please. Um, and to one of your favorite groups or something, or to some of your friends in the messenger. Uh, this evening, I really feel like uh, one of the anointings that um, Brian walks in, he and his wife, when I see them, I see them like it's a crystal clear water, but it's a blue color. And it's like light, it's like intermingled with lightning and lighter fluid. So tonight is going to be very power packed. And if there's something you need the anointing to break, I really, really, really am seeing lightning touching the demonic horde in your life and just mm. annihilating whatever came against you, whatever that thing is that is like a hindrance, that is like a dam, that is um, holding up the promise God has given you. He's given you a promise, okay, if, the, if it's in infirmity, if it's financial breakthrough, you know, wow. I want to welcome y'all this evening, and thank you so much for, you know, being here. I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm excited, too. I, I've, I, I've been in prayer almost all day, uh, just hearing what God is, is going to do and just seeing what what is going to happen through the Lord tonight because, you know, these platforms, we, we really have to thank, uh, you know, platforms like this with technology, and, and, and I'm, I'm not the, mm -hmm. the biggest fan of platforms, because of the fact that it it's something that glorifies us as as people but when we have these outlets where we can just listen to the holy spirit and we're able to to impart mm -hmm. that what the holy spirit wants us to do through all of that it's it's such a, a great thing and technology is something to to be thankful for because not only are tiffany are, are you reaching people in in your home state People, reaching people in America, but you're reaching people worldwide. Amen. And that is that is something that that we weren't able to do in ministry 20 years ago. So so that it's something that's great being able to to impart to people and and be able to pray for people as the Holy Spirit unctions is is fantastic. And being able to to team with with great people and and feeling that anointing and glory happening that much further uh, is, is just amazing and and I, i'm so honored to be here tonight uh and seeing a lot of people that i know a lot of uh, a lot of great friends that that are coming in and uh and i'm excited to see what god's gonna do tonight me too and there is a cool fact some of you may know about um pastor brian but you may not know you may not know this about him he's a newlywed you guys <laughs> <laughs> been married now uh we got we actually got married june 23rd look at that and so it's uh yeah it's <laughs> we're, we're still technically in the honeymoon phase yeah. uh she is not uh she hasn't got rid of me yet at all i'm pretty happy with that <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness wow that is so amazing um, I, I just love seeing God putting together those dynamite power mm -hmm. couples. You and your wife, y'all are a dynamite power couple God is using in the earth. And then he's also, what, he's connecting your ministry to other ministries. And I call it like this, whether you are a train that is colliding with another train, and it's not a train crash, it's actually a glory power infusion and explosion mm -hmm. of greater or whether it's two planes colliding for the same thing. It is uh, just that power explosion, that dandelion plume that I keep telling people about. The Holy yes. Spirit is drawing and 
literally crashing people together in the most awesome of ways for his kingdom glory and power. I really feel like that. Oh my goodness. There's, there is miracle working power on this feet mm. tonight. If you want to share yes. this with your friends or you know somebody who has an ailment, I don't care what it is. You know, we did a fertility video. What was this? Uh, probably last week or the week before. Um, we had just two of the people that testified. There were many other women who, when we did that fertile myrtle, you know, video, they just got pregnant. Boom, boom, boom. People that, <laughs> you know, had been sterile and couldn't have children or one of the couples, you know, they were sterile, but they had gone through fertility procedures and they had one child. Um, and the doctors were like, you know, it's going to be more cost, more money, more this. And she was like, I, my body, I can't, we can't handle that. God, you're just going to have to give us a baby and bam, if he didn't do it. <laughs> Amen. Amazing. So, but, so please share this with your friends because I, sometimes, you know, Holy Spirit's going to do something and you just, but I'm really seeing something really, really big this evening. Something. Tell Ab us, absolutely. I really believe God's downloaded some kind of a word in you. Pastor Brian, Apostle <laughs> Brian, you know, that's what I'm seeing on your life. It's like I see that pastoral mantle where you pull people, you and your wife together. Y'all are pulling little dibs up and under your arms. Okay, I see y'all mm -hmm. doing that and tucking them up around y'all. And you have, don't you have a church? Um, I I do not have a church. Okay. I'm part of a wonderful church family, okay. but uh, but God has uh, has laid in our heart for a church. Uh, okay. I'm I'm waiting on God for that. Ever how long it is, but. But uh, in my heart, we have one. Yes, I mean, there's no yes. doubt about it. You know, we are the church. When two or more yes. are gathered together, you know, mm -hmm. we are creating the church, whatever size that is, whatever type that is. But I'm really seeing apostolic, the apostolic in you, uh, just really going in and claiming regions. That's one of the things that I'm seeing a mandate on your life for. I receive that. <laughs> I, I receive that. I mean, it's, you know, I've, the way that I look at it, and you made a good point, uh, that you know we we whether you're you're the train, whether you're the airplane, I I feel like in in this season, whether I'm the caboose, as long as I'm a part of being able to do what God is wanting us to do in this season, I don't care if I'm the caboose, uh, because I feel like that the fact of the matter is that that God is moving in such a way right now, and and it's so awesome that that our ministry team we've been praying for pretty much since since february march um and god i feel like has has really entered us into a time of the suddenlies which is still going on as we speak right now uh it's it's just wow. things are happening just boom 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 fast as they can possibly happen and and it's it's been that way it, it's been that way and, and it hasn't stopped and and i really feel like that we are still in that season of where god is raising people up to do the work. And, and honestly, the thing that I'm, I'm feeling in my spirit is the people that you might not normally think are going to be risen up. It, Come it's on. those people that, that may have, that may have walked away from their calling. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in this season, God's saying, rise up and retake the calling that I've commanded upon you. And, and I feel like that, uh, and, and you are right because God has given me a word a few weeks ago that is um, that is really holding true to me right now, and it's it's actually a season of heavenly applause. Come on! And, and what that heavenly applause is 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 in my spirit that God has showed me is that those people that have lost their calling, and they are trying to move back into the season with God, and it's almost to the point like where heaven is opened up, and you see angels applauding and clapping because of the fact that those those called people of God are coming back home. And they're wow. retaking that mantle that God placed upon them, and they're able to step back into where they're supposed to be. And that's that that combines with that season of suddenly, yeah, where it's all happening just like that. And see, that's so, the return of the prodigals that you're talking about. That's yes. like, and you're also talking about every single person on this news feed, every single person on this live stream feed. He's talking about you, Deb, Anna. Who else is on here? You know, that he's talking to you directly, Allison, different people that are signing on and are on here. He's talking uh, about you picking up mm. that mantle, running with it, going with it. Do you feel like how many people, Brian, Pastor Brian, yes. do you see that literally they, they're like, I screwed up and it must be over and finished. But God says yeah. that's not the truth. I was one of those people. Oh, wow. I was one of those people. I mean, it's. 
you know, I, I had a calling in, in 1996 to pastor, and and it was a, a time that that honestly that and it's another thing that I wanted to talk about tonight is that I I did not have the discipleship behind me to be able to take that and go with it because I, I didn't understand what direction that I was moving in. And because of that, I, I ran, I ran from that calling and, 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 you know, was, was a heathen for, for many years until I came back to the calling and, and was able to do that. And praise God for children that, that pray for you unconditionally. Come on. And they, they, they pray for you uh, to come back home and, and they, my children's prayers were answered because of that. And, and now I'm able to step back in to that calling wow. that God has called me to do. So, so it's, it can happen for all of us. It's just, we just have to repent of those things that we've Amen. done, start looking at holiness and never turn back from, from that again. Wow. So basically you were a prodigal. You know, I even had a prodigal phase. Come on. Yeah. There's no one on the planet probably who's never had a prodigal thing. Uh, <laughs> most of us had those teenage years or some kind of something, what, whatever we did. Come on. Um, and some people had the, what they had the prodigal decades. And yes. I really feel so strongly that if you, if it wasn't just a few years and maybe you did lose what you felt were decades and you may, maybe you're in your sixties, maybe you're in your thirties, maybe you're in your forties, maybe, you know, you're at a certain age and the enemy's trying to convince you in your mind that it's done. It's over. You missed the gate. You missed the doorway. You didn't hear the bell. The bell went off. You heard it. You were in disobedience. God isn't going to use you. That's not true. God's purpose and plan for you, you know, all you have to do is just be obedient and step right into it. This is the time where he's going to skyrocket you and zing you forward, zing you forward. All we have to do is say, we're the yes men and women of God. We're the ones who say yes, and we zing. We go for it. And this is that time. I Oh, just like you said, those people without, some people call them the no names, the people who, yes. you know, they've not had a name. They've not been in ministry for like decades where people know, oh, everybody on the planet knows that name. You know, we're going to exactly. take an example. Um, I don't necessarily like dropping names. I don't know her personally, but let's take a name, Joyce Meyer. Everybody just mm -hmm. about knows that name. Okay. Uh, whether you like her or not, people know that name. But these are going to be people that somebody says a name and you go, who? No, I don't know. Exactly. Huh? And you're just like, exactly. Man, that doesn't even seem familiar. And and it's and and you're you're right on that. Uh, that people people we we sit back and and it's you know, of course, it's our own life that, that we have to make sure that we're living correctly. Mm -hmm. But without a lack of discipleship and without a lack of being mm -hmm. under excellent men and women of God, it's with a good direction. Some of it is very hard to be able to move into that. So that's why sometimes we do see that that backward stance that where we go backwards instead of moving forward. And, and I thank God. I thank God for the for the coverings that men and women of God have. Uh, through great uh, spiritual mothers and fathers uh, that I, I praise God for churches that are that are not only seeking to see people saved, but they're also after those people are saved are seeking discipleship for those people because it's not enough to just get saved. It's what happens after you get saved. What am I supposed to expect? What am I supposed to do when there's a, a spiritual warfare that's taking place in my life? Where is the discipleship for that? And and that's something that really God has laid hard on my heart. I've I, there are sometimes that I'll be I will actually be studying, and I will break down in complete tears because of the things that God lays in my heart about people that's not being discipled, and mm -hmm. and uh, it brings back to uh, Matthew twenty eight, where where Jesus is given the great commission, and he says that. Uh, and I'm going to read out of the, the uh, ESV version. It says that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Come on. Come we have to make sure that when when we are, you know, I, I'll give you an example. My, my church here uh, in, in uh, Nicholasville, uh, we saw eight people saved during our conference this weekend. Amazing. I mean, a time to rejoice. Yes. Uh, and it, it was one of those times where you didn't expect it. And brother gets a word 
and then one person comes up and seven more follows right behind him. But it's, you know, I know that from the covering that I have, that those people are going to be discipled because of the, because of how Holy Spirit unctions in our church. Yeah. You know, what happens when it happens. So it's, so if, if you are newly saved, even if you've been saved for, for years, it, it is our job to be able to disciple people and make sure that they're not going to experience the same fall that we did. Come on. And, and give them the tools that are necessary to be able to, uh, to say, hey, th this is what is going to probably happen in your life. And if it does, this is the scripture that this is talking about. I see your wife. You know, that's what. Hey, Deanna. Hey, Deanna. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you there. Go ahead. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. Uh, I know your guy's bond. Um, so it, it's to me, it's that if you are, are out there tonight and you're, you're suffering from that of where you've fallen, and, and you're, you're coming back to God. And, and here's the best way that you can do it because God right now is dealing with me where most of the time I'm not sleeping. I, I used to be a pretty sound sleeper. Holy Spirit is waking me up at all times of the night, uh, giving me word and, and saying, you need to pray for this person. Come on. And if you're experiencing that, you're starting to see what that suddenly is talking about because mm -hmm. God is moving in such a fast paced motion right now that we don't have time to mess around anymore. Come on. We, we, we don't have time. And, and God is, God is, is telling us that, that just as the word says that I will come back as a thief in the night. And I mean, how do we know when a thief is going to show up? We don't. So God is saying in this hour, be ready because you do not know when mm. I'm going to come back. So, if we're not discipling people and we're not discipling those that need, need the word of God in their life, whether they're new Christians or whether they, they are just people that just needs discipled because there is a difference. We just need to make sure that we are doing that so that one, we're fulfilling the word because God, because Jesus said, make disciples. And the second part of that is, is that how many of us, as new Christians knew what, how to deal with the spiritual attack. How many of uh -huh. us knew when the Holy spirit was unctioning in us to, to move forward? How many of us knew when, when we needed to, to pray? I mean, there, there's just, there's only so much that our pastors can do. That's right. And that's the biggest thing. I mean, if you've got a, a church full of thousands, hundreds and thousands of people, there's only so much that the pastor can do. So it's, it's our job as, as the children of God to disciple people and teach them the truth and say, this is what you need to do whenever this happens. So yes. it's, but discipleship is a I big thing for me. Saying. I just feel like that, that we're so program oriented. Wow. And see, I love what you're saying here because you're not saying that man is supposed to replace Holy spirit. Basically what you're saying is, those people who disciple are going to be there to, when you talk with them about things, they're going to be able to say, that's God. Yeah, pull yes. into that voice. You need to be, well, don't keep coming to me about this. You know, you need to hear God on this. You know, you know. but you can also be there to be like, ooh, are you getting in the word? You know, that violates the word. What you're saying is in, in what the Bible says. Because, you know, when people first get saved, they may not know what this is. They don't need 50 Absolutely. scriptures to run with the uh, vision God has given them. But it is nice to have uh, people with the heart of God who can tell you and be honest with you, honey, I, um, you know, seek God on that. Or, honey, that totally violates scripture, you know. Because there have been times where people told me things like, they were like, um, that's not biblical, honey. And I'm like, really? Why? And then they would tell me because they didn't get mad. Now, I have seen people who were in authority over people, and they'd say that's not biblical, and they'd ask why, and they thought their authority was being questioned. People who are ignorant yeah. and don't know what's in here, you're going to have to teach and train them, which means you're going to hear a lot of questions. And it is not in violating your authority. It is giving you an opportunity to teach, to instruct, to be a mother, yes. to be a father, to be somebody, you know, with a true heart that can disciple people. I love what yes. you're saying. And that's everybody on here. That y'all, if Absolutely. you know something, 
whatever wonderful thing you know, even if it's only one thing, which everybody on here, I bet you can probably, you might find it hard in the beginning, but if I asked you to write a list of things that you know, you could write easy probably 25 things you know most other people don't, that you could be yes. teaching and training somebody in your neighborhood, in your family. It doesn't have to be, oh, wow, I've got to, you know, learn thousands of things and then start a church. You're going to have to start somewhere small and God elevates you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And and I and I'll be honest with you on that too, uh, Prophet Tiffany, is that that God is unctioning me right now that there there may be one, there may be more than one uh person that's watching this broadcast tonight that actually is not even saved. Come on. And 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 I, I know that it's it's rare for us to be able to do uh any kind of uh salvation message do it. uh in certain times like this, but I feel like that that God is speaking to mm. some people tonight. Uh, about salvation and and I hope that we continue with this and and I hope that we can uh, actually be able to, to talk with people via chat uh, or whatever it takes uh, for some people to accept Christ tonight before we mm -hmm. get off this broadcast yes and people can contact you through the messenger you know you guys you can contact yes. uh, Pastor Brian or myself through the messenger um <laughs> I'm going to go grab, I don't know why it's doing this. My phone is getting a little warm. I'm going to walk in here and grab something. But you keep talking. Um, you were mentioning okay. stuff about the Father's heart. And I, I feel like that, one, when, when we were all new Christians, we, we all did we know how to activate Holy Spirit and, and how, to, how to even some of us didn't even know how to really pray when we were first saved. And, and I, again, that's the, the discipleship part of it is the fact that, that we, we need that discipleship to be able to learn. Uh, and if we get to a point where we feel like that we know everything, we got to go back to the basics because there, you've got, you learn something from God new every day. I mean, there, there's, there's nothing that, that we can, we can't go every day and not learn something new. It, it's just not possible. And, and, and I, I, I pray to God that we never get to a point where we think we know everything because we don't. Amen. Uh, so, so that's, that's why we need those, those spiritual fathers and those spiritual mothers that, that when we run across something that we might not understand, we need to be able to go to them and say, Hey, I, I need this answer. I, I need this answer. Uh, can you help me with that? And, and it's, it's not a bad thing to have that type of covering in your own, own ministry and, and even in your own walk with Christ, uh, there's a lot of people that I look up to uh, in the ministry. And, uh, you know, I've, I, I've got a great apostle at, at my church uh, that is, is the greatest man of God that I've ever met. But there's only certain things that I'll take to him uh, because of, of, you know, that things that I should know. But uh, but I feel like that uh, that really we we've, we've got a lot of great people that's on this broadcast tonight that is feeling that same way. They're feeling that, that tug from the Holy Spirit that where they've either fallen or they're coming back uh, wow. or some folks that are actually really needing to come to Jesus. And, and I, I really believe in my heart that, that we're going to experience that tonight. I think that, that we're going to have some folks that, that might even come across chat and say, I need Jesus. And, and I, I want to be able to, to, to broadcast that if you can truly say right now that you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please either message us here on chat and let us know or send us a message in Messenger yeah. and let us pray with you and, and allow tonight to, to not be that one night that you don't accept Christ when you're being unctioned to do so. Uh, so please make sure that, that if that is you, that you are that you are accepting Christ tonight because it is – Folks, we don't know when it's going to be our last days. We don't know when Christ is going to come back to get his bride. And, and I don't want anybody watching this broadcast to be left behind. Come on. So, so check your heart tonight. Check your heart tonight and be able to say with, with wholeheartedly, if there is one inch of sin that is in your body that, that has plagued you for years, make sure that you are checking that and then all we have to do is just say that prayer together and be able to say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. 
and I cannot live without you, Jesus. Amen. So, so I really feel like, I feel like, just like you said at the start of the broadcast, that we're, there's some power of God moving in on this broadcast tonight. And, and I really feel like that it is going to continue to, to increase as we go on. So make sure that you are not getting off this broadcast until you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, you know, I can attest to different times when I was growing up <clears throat> where there were people that you would know who everybody would be like, oh, I hope they get saved this week. I hope they go down and get saved this week. And people were like, well, they need to because of the lifestyle they're living and they're not saved. And, and if people would talk with them, many of them would say things like, well, I will before I know I'm going to die, or I will when I get in my 20s. I just want to live wild for a little bit, not a whole lot of times. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. Um, back. Yep, you froze up a little bit on us there, probably. Okay, that's weird. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, so... Uh, anyway, we all know people who, for whatever reason, they didn't go down to the altar. And we're like, why did they not go down to the altar? But And then they left, and they ended up dying. I can remember that happening at least three times in my life that I can point out twice when I was a teenager. You know, I'm, I was probably not even a teenager the first time I saw that happen, the second time. And then the third time I was an adult. And I just remember being grieved. And yes. it really put the fear of God in a lot of people where they... Um, I didn't want, you know, we're supposed to really have a reverential fear and respect for God, but it really, you know, let it opened some of the other people's eyes. You know, God used it regardless, but I don't want any of you on here watching to be one of those who ends up getting off this news feed and, you know, doesn't wake up tomorrow for whatever reason, or you just continued in the sin and then it, you know, two or three months down the road, it were to take your life. I mean, hey there, darling. And when I landed on the ground, God said, you know, it was the Holy Spirit. He said, roll hard for the ditch. You know, so I, I rolled for the ditch, but I remember thinking, that's crazy. I don't understand why I'm rolling for the ditch. Nobody wants to be drunk in a ditch, but it saved my life because when I looked up and was trying to get myself out of the ditch, they had backed the car and it was sitting exactly where I had mm. fallen. They would uh. have run me slap over. They would have killed me. And God showed me, he said, if you don't stop, you're going to end up dead, you know, within the next three, three and a half months. And I couldn't. Mm. And I finally just had to give it up and go to him and say, if you don't do something, I'm going to be dead just like you said. Mm. And so if it is drugs, if it is alcohol, if it's sex addiction, whatever that thing is that has you by the throat, okay, this there is an anointing here tonight that will break that off of you. Yes. If that's yes. you and you feel comfortable responding, you know, you're welcome to say that's me and we want to pray for you right now. There are a lot of people on here right now and there is power in agreement and you yes. know, it's Holy Spirit, it's on him. But God gave me a strategy. He said, Drop those people, drop that school. I gave up a college education to save my life, honey. It was either stay in school and end up dead or drop out. I'm not telling anybody on here to drop out of college, but for me, that was the strategy. Okay? Get out of that city. Mm. Don't take their phone mm. calls. I even hung up on some people. This is before the days of caller ID. I'd go, hello, <laughs> and they'd say something. I'd be like, oh. And click, hang the phone up. Because if I didn't, they'd have been at my house or they'd have been trying to find me. You know what I'm saying? So I did what Holy Spirit said. I used his strategy. It took 10 years for that thing to die. Why? I didn't have Holy Spirit-filled friends that could pray for me. But we're here tonight, and we want to pray for you. If that is you and you'd like to put your name on here and us pray for you, that's fine. If you want to yes. contact us later in the Messenger app, you know, that's fine. Either myself or uh, Pastor Brian and his wife. You know, we love you. We care about you. Absolutely. And and it's... and. Just, just like Prophet Tiffany said, there is an anointing that that is falling right now. That is, I mean, it's. it's I, I don't know if anybody else on that broadcast is, is is able to feel that, but the Holy Spirit is moving. The yes. Holy Spirit is is getting ready to start revealing some things, and 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 I really feel like that everybody needs to click that share button a little bit more, uh, because we're going to start seeing some amazing things start happening for the Lord here. Because here's the thing. We do these broadcasts for God. This, this has nothing to do with, with Brian. 
This has nothing to do with Prophet Tiffany. This is <laughs> this is Holy Ghost. And and we need to realize that that one, the things we do for God does not glorify us, it glorifies him. Because I'm I'm just an old heathen guy that that realized one day, you know what, my life was gonna end if I didn't turn my life back to God because I, I was probably the baddest of the baddest. Uh, running with the wrong crowd, uh, doing things that I don't need to do. And and God stopped me and said, if you want to continue living for your children, you need to make sure that you are that you are getting out of this mess and you are moving forward right now. I so, see several so, people. Yeah, I so, see Go ahead. We, we definitely want to pray for that. And, and it's, you know, the thing about it is, guys, it's it's not about um, sa you saying that you need prayer and things to embarrass you or anything of that nature. It's that that making that public confession is yeah. showing Holy Spirit that I'm having faith of what you're getting ready to pray for. That yes. that faith is and, and everybody cracks up at me because I've got a formula that that I've got set that I feel like that that if, if God could be a part of a mathematical equation, it would be this is that that faith plus actions equals results. And without faith, one, you're not going to reach in. You're not going to reach heaven anyway. Without the action of prayer, without the action of speaking in the Holy Spirit, without any of those actions, you're not going to see the results that you need in your life. God wants you to believe what you're praying for, and then you need to make that move to do so. So everybody that's that's writing in this chat, you're making that action known, saying, yes, God, I am believing yes. right now that whatever my situation <laughs> is, <laughs> whether it is, whether it is, is uh, just like Prophet Tiffany said, whether it, it's drugs, whether it is a, a sex addiction, whether it's just backslidden, whether mm -hmm. you're just sitting there going, you know what? I need to come to know God again. I need God back in my life because there is something missing. I feel empty. I, I feel so just wronged in life that something is missing in my life, and that is God. So if, if you're making that proclamation right now, you're telling God, I'm believing that you're going to take care of this. Because the Bible plainly states, lay your troubles at my feet. Mm. It doesn't say leave them there and come back and get them seven days later. That's right. There are several people that have put on here about salvation for themselves or their relatives. Yes. I just want to come on. Uh, come on. I just want to speak with regards to those relatives it's in particular, but you as well as your relatives on here, if that is you, I, we're just decreeing and declaring right now that yes. every uh, yoke of bondage is being ripped yes. off of their neck right now. Yes. That is on the inside. The God is descending out of the heavens and landing on their head, hitting them in the face in the most glorious of ways. Yes. These yes. are some of the people that I'm seeing, a young man in particular mm. who's driving in his car right now, but the fire of God has just landed on his head. The fire of God has just hit him in the mm. face. It's love, but it is a rebuke from the Lord as well because he knows that he knows that he knows he's not supposed to be doing what he's doing. And that doesn't mean right this second he's not doing something simple. He's driving down the road. But I'm seeing the things where he's going, what he just came out of, where he's headed. And this is a, the, that fire is transforming him. Whoever's relative that is, it is a young man in his 20s. You're going to get a phone call. Somebody is going to alert you and let you know tonight he got saved. He had an encounter with the Lord. I'm seeing mm. that so clearly on here. So fuck mm. up for that right now. There is fire going into bellies of those who are unsaved. Holy Spirit, woo them. We just mm. say, pull them, Lord. Pull them, pull them. Pull hey, them son, a pizza we ah. break chains and shackles off their arms, off their mm. feet. We, we speak identity into them. You're a mm -hmm. saved child of God. You're not just saved, but you're a son, royal son and daughter reigning and ruling in the kingdom. You belong to the kingdom. Let hell, we command hell to loose these sons yes. and daughters yes. of the kingdom. Yes. Loose them in the name of Jesus. You're coming through the fire and you're coming out on the other side in the name of Jesus. Yes. <laughs> You have mm. it, Pastor Brian. Sure. Oh boy. Um right now God it God is speaking into me about somebody right now that 
that is having a, a situation with from a knowing God at a young age and and you kind of did the same thing that I did uh, and you strayed away for for years you strayed away for years mm-hmm. and and God during that time frame kept you alive because God is getting ready to use you Come on. And, mm-hmm. and God is getting ready to take you to a new plateau but what I'm seeing is that God is is not only going to raise you up but he is going to raise the people that are around you up as well. Come on. Because, because the crowds that you used to hang out with are no longer the crowds that you want to hang out with anymore. So I, I, need, I need somebody to tell me if, if you are, are straight away and you are trying to find your way back to God, I need you to at least just say, hey, that's me, uh, because I want to pray that the fire of God will come down upon you and will burn out every bad thing that has happened in your life, that you have allowed to happen in your life, and that God is going to restore you to the person that you used to be, but he's not only going to restore you to the person that you were, but he is going to open something new in your life that, that you've never experienced before. He's going to place something in your life that you've never experienced. And, and I want you to accept that because what we're seeing, like I, like I said at the start of the broadcast, we are opening a season of heavenly applause. And that is the angels in heaven are applauding for you to come back home, for you to come back to where you were, but become better than who you were. Because we, we are in a time of suddenlies where it's going to happen fast. It's going to happen fast. You're going to start seeing changes overnight. You're going to start seeing because Holy Spirit is working in a fast way right now where he's changing your entire being just like that. It's not going to be a slow process. Lynn Tracy, we'll pray for you right now on that. If that is you, we will pray for you right now in Jesus' name. name God will restore you and will allow the fire of God to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit is making you burn on the inside of everything that is trying to be restored, that everything that is bad, you need to pray right now for the things that have plagued you for years, that they will never come back again, that they will never (laughs) enter your life again, and you need to keep that prayer. You need to keep that and hold true to the Holy Spirit to be able to say, I will never go back to the things that I used to be. That's for Patricia. We're not going backwards. We're not going backwards. We're going forward. Yes. That's Shoot. for Patricia, too. Prophet Allen, we welcome you. Hello, dear darling. Um, y'all share this video. I want to speak right now to every... Um, I don't usually do it quite like this, but I, I really feel impressed several times. God wants me to speak to every serpentine spirit that has a hold of whoever's watching this show. Whatever has a hold of you, we speak to it in the name and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Loose these people. Let yes. them go. Yes. The fire he of the Lord. He da 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 these da people da are tucked into the shirt pocket of the fire. Who was going to stick their hands into the shirt pocket of daddy God and expect Shh. not a thing to happen? The fire of God mm. will soon mm. back mm. you off in the name of Jesus. I just yes. make right now every uh, witch and warlock spirit that has come up against you in your life and in your family to turn you loose in its eyes mm. to be yes, somewhere God. else. We say you're walking out free. We're saying that you're coming out of the occult. We're saying that you're coming out of uh, the, oh my goodness, I'm seeing like a come drug type thing. It's almost like drug lord is what I'm hearing. So whether you were the drug lord or you are under something like that, we're saying that's broken off of you. God will give you a plan of escape. Take it when the door opens. If you want to live, take it when the door opens in the name of Jesus. Mm. 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 Come on. You mean, you mean, amen, prophet Allen. Those angels have been sent out to pull off those serpents, to pull them away from you. We command ministering angels even to remove the envenomation. Remove the venom in Jesus' name. Get in the word. Whoever that is, get in the word. Mm. If you know you've been poisoned by either another person, somebody's mouth, you sat under a ministry that was just feeding you poison, whatever kind of poison it was. Come on. Come on. Get in the word. Get what? Sit and bask 
in some praise and worship music and say, Holy Spirit, I admit I'm bitter. I admit there's unforgiveness. Wash and cleanse me. He's going to come in with that crystal clear water, that blue water we were talking about. It's crystal clear. Yes. It's like lighter fluid. It's lit. It is lit with power, and it's the power of God. That mm. anointing that destroys completely that yoke. It's like when you get up off the floor. How many times has this happened for me? And I'm sure uh, Pastor Brian and his wife, Deanna, come on. They have literally, I know I have, I've gotten up off the floor from just a little bit of praise and worship where I pushed through. Yes. And it was yes. broken off of me. Yes. The yes. yoke was destroyed. And I did not have to deal with it again yes. a day later, three days later, or two weeks later. Go. Yes. Gone in the name of Jesus. That's what I see for you in your mm. life. Mm. And and I want for those of you that can pray in the spirit where you're at right now in this broadcast, I feel like that, that we need people praying in the spirit because I feel a breakthrough is getting ready to take place on this broadcast tonight. And I want you to make sure that you pray in the spirit and we, we want to see the, the power of God be released even more. Uh, and I do want to say, Lynn Tracy, that we are going to pray for your marriage. Come on. And, and, and right now I'm praying for all the marriages that are broken. And, and I'm not going to claim broken because because what God puts asunder, never let a man put put it apart. And, and, and we're going to believe that what God puts together will never be separated. So so we are going to believe that right now in Jesus name that that the marriages that are that are be, if you're watching live or if you're watching via the, the replay right now, we claim we decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus that yes. your marriage is healed, healed that whatever whether it is whether it is a mutual thing of of, of attacks whether it is a demonic <laughs> attack whether it is something that we have allowed to enter into our life we are claiming right now that whatever principality is coming across your marriage that it is loosed in jesus yeah. name we cast it out and we throw it into the abyss where it came from we are claiming victory we are claiming restoration <laughs> Yeah. And we are claiming longevity in Jesus' mm. name right now that whatever is taking place in your marriage, that your spouse that might not know Jesus, that they're going to look at you before the night's over and they're going to be like, honey, I'm, uh, I'm having a, a burning sensation in my body. And you know right now and then and there that the Holy Spirit is burning them, is unctioning them to come back home. I am come praying on. for that restoration. I am yeah. praying yeah. for yeah. communication yeah. to come back in as a marriage because we need communication in our marriages. Yes. We not only do we need God, but we need that communication so that we all can, can coincide together. Mm. I, we need, yes. we need more of husbands and wives together going to church together. If you've got a spouse that won't go to church with you, I am claiming right now in Jesus name that Sunday is your day. Come on. That Sunday is your day. That Holy spirit will speak to them right where we're at right now. That your spouse, whether it be your wife, whether it be your husband, that the Holy Spirit is saying you need to go to church Sunday and they're going to look at you and they're going to say, for some weird reason, I got to go with you this Sunday. Amen. Somebody, We are claiming that. it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Shoot. And I'm seeing, a, I want to add a little bit onto that. I'm seeing a canker worm for some of mm. you. You're married, and your marriage, you know, it, it could be better. You know that. But you're also not in dire straits in your marriage. But you really feel like y'all have had the canker worm come in over the years and really <clears throat> went in there and just did like a creating all these demonic wormholes and all the, this loss. And it's like loss after loss after loss, but you're still there. But you're like, what is all of this? We want to speak to that and repair those breaches in your wall right yes. now. We just uh, thank you right now for your healing balm, Lord God, going in there, that oil going in to the riddled places in these marriages, in the places where um, it was a little bit of loss here and a little bit of loss there and a little bit here and a little bit there. And when you look back, it just seems like a lot. Well, we just speak right now for restoration, restitution, and vindication. Let the yes. fire of God fall on the heads of your enemies. Let the angels get between you and these demons. Let you be rewarded for your faithfulness. 
for sticking it out together in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your yes, reward come forth and forward. This is the hey, 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 and new This is the time, especially that new Sophie. Uh, was it 50? I'm sorry, I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, I'm thinking it's uh, 50, but it's uh, faithfulness, being rewarded for that faithfulness. Okay? Uh, and God is doing that in this season. It doesn't matter if you only obeyed one little tiny smidge or you obeyed a whole bunch. But God's rewarding you. He's reigning now on the righteous and the unrighteous, basically. He's rewarding you. Let that reward come forth and forward in you. Birth in your marriage a thing that was not there before. Let it birth into fruitfulness, birth into flowering, birth into uh I hear mm -hmm. minstrels playing almost like if you were newlyweds again. It's like you're you're in the marriage ceremony again. You know, that phase, it's not like you were, you know, it's rare that mm -hmm. you would hear somebody say, we were standing there getting married going, oh, it hurts me while I'm here. You know, that's when you're standing there in a the marriage ceremony, you're going, oh, oh, come on now. That is what I'm mm -hmm. hearing in the relationships and marriages right now. Yes, There's come a on. special grace, a special grace has arrived, especially for the month of September. I want somebody to recognize that. Mm -hmm. You're going to see from this day forward, and it's going to accelerate like a, a a hay bale. If you decide to roll mm -hmm. a hay bale down a mountain, you know, it starts off a little bit, but it's starting to accelerate. And as closer you get into the end of August, second, mm -hmm. third week of August, the closer you get towards that September, it's going to be boom, when it hits that September mark. And you're going to be like, woo! This, it, it's going to be like, Wow, where, what? Oh, you're going to be like, this is the best relationship we've ever had. This is the best genuine time we've ever had. Yes, in our Jesus. yes. That I want you to receive. I see it, I know it, and I'm yes. believing it for you. We're all claiming it in the name of Jesus for you. Yes, in Jesus' name. Shoot. Whoo. There's, there's something I, I want to address that, that from the chat we just seen in the chat. Uh, somebody asked a, a really interesting question. Uh, they said, what, what does it mean when I start seeing ravens? And, uh, and, and this is something that's, that's dire to me because uh, I, I've witnessed it. My, my wife's witnessed it. The rest of our, yeah. our, our ministry team has, has, has dealt with it. And, and, I, and I, I can't remember the name because it was going by so fast because I, I love these. I love everybody's the, the, the Lord's moving right now. And you can yes. tell when that chat starts going so fast, God's moving. Don't let that stop. You, you keep asking God. You keep mm -hmm. receiving in Jesus' name. But I want to talk to the ravens for a minute. And I want to be able to look. And because what you got to realize, and, and this is a great thing because it's something that we actually uh, learned even more about in conference this weekend uh, at my church, uh, which if you all miss fire on the altar uh, here in Nicholasville, Kentucky, at Ignite Church, you all miss uh, pretty much Jesus walking into the room. Because it, it, it was that impactful. We, we had an, the, the greatest time I've ever had in the Holy Spirit. But what we realized from the Bible is that, uh, is that ravens and birds themselves represent demonic activity in the Bible. And what you want to realize is that if you've got these things that are showing up, and, and these things are doing this, it, it's, you want to look at those ravens as the messengers. And especially if you're having dreams of those things and you're, you're seeing those things in the spirit, those things are trying to come against you. And, and here's the thing that you need to do is you need to pray to Holy Spirit that those tricks and those plans and those tools and snares of the enemy do not come across you. You need to make sure that you're praying in the Holy Ghost that, the enemy has to get behind you or under your mm -hmm. foot, which is where I like to keep them. Right. So make sure that if you're seeing those kind of things happening, you know, that, that is either it manifesting or it is actually the Holy spirit trying to warn you of a situation that you need to try to get out of. So, so I, I pray for that right now. I pray against enemy attacks right now that are being planned <laughs> and, and snared against us. And, and I, I'll tell you another thing is that when you, when you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you, you hear people talking in your house and you're like, wait a minute, this, this, isn't, this isn't anybody in my house. And you walk into your living room and you're witnessing enemy attacks trying to come against you. Come on. 
They'll come in your living room and they'll talk about what they're going to do to take you out of God's will. So they're, what I'm telling you right now, there are people that's on this broadcast that is having those enemy attacks and they don't know what it is. You need to see it for what it is. Yeah. Because if you are trying to get closer to God's will, you need to make sure that you are taking a hold in the Holy Spirit. You need to make sure that you are attacking that where it's at. Don't let the attacks of the enemy take the things of God from you. Don't allow that to happen. Come on. We There's so many of us today that doesn't realize the power of God that lies within us. Mm. We don't realize that. We don't realize that we have the keys to the power of God to be able to be unleashed here on earth. You have angels at your disposal to be able to take those principalities out. Yes. So I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody's life in this chat tonight. That if, if you are suffering an enemy attack, that we call the angels of heaven to stand yes. at your doors. Stand at your windows, stand at your bedroom door and is protecting you and is going to, to get you through that situation, whether it's a financial situation, whether it's you got a bad medical report, which we'll speak against that, too. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you need to realize your power in God. God is going to manifest those things. It's nothing that we do. I am just Brian, the empty vessel that God is using there. I have no power. I have no power as Brian, but when the power of God falls upon you and the Holy spirit is working, you have unlimited power against principalities. Yes. Now I do want to add just a little bit of something here. Um, ravens, when you have a dream in my life, they had always been negative, 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 attacking me, doing things, stealing, um, and it was very gross and awful. Um, and then there was another time, also know your season. Ask Holy Spirit because he switched the dream meaning on me one time. I saw ravens in my backyard and I'm a prophet, okay? So I was like, oh no, they're up in my yard. And I went to spirit away. Immediately Holy Spirit said, that is a prophetic sign that you have just got provision and there's so many ravens that you're having tons of provision coming to you. And I went, oh, well, they flew away, sort of. He said, they'll be back. And I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> so you can tell, you know, you can stop, pull back a little bit, and then you'll be able to tell if it's scary and demonic, you know, or if it's provision, you'll be able to tell. They'll either have something and they're giving you something nice and awesome, or they're trying to destroy you, like <laughs> you know, uh, Pastor uh, Brian was talking about. So that's just wisdom. Ask Holy Spirit, what does he mean? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Somebody mentioned vomiting worms, what that could mean. I really don't think this is going to be like dream interpretation video. But for that, I do want to encourage you. If you're having a dream, you're vomiting worms. We just spoke about worms and prayed against that canker worm earlier. And so yes. um, worms are things that come to destroy or to make you sick. In the natural, if you had worms, they what? They get on the host and they suck all the nutrients and life out of you. So if you're vomiting them up, I'm going to take that as a good sign. I would take yes. that as a positive sign that God is expelling what was trying to drain you, oppose you and take you out to cause yes. you to wither and die. He's causing that thing to be vomited out of you. You're going through deliverance. God is delivering you from the hand of the enemy. There, there's, uh, there's something too, uh, Prophet Tiffany, that that God has really laid uh, upon my heart uh, this week, and and it's something that I, I feel like that that we'll have a lot of people that will uh, comment on this, is that forgiveness is probably one of the most important things in the kingdom of God because, because forgiveness one is, is, is that major step that we take to accept Christ as, as our Lord and savior. And something that God has been dealing with me is the fact of, of forgiving enemies and, and asking for forgiveness. And, and I feel like that that is a continuation that, that we're feeling right now is that there's some of you 
that are are having problems forgiving your enemies. And 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 because of that for that non forgiveness of your enemies, mm. God is keeping you in a stagnant situation. Come on, you're you're ready for breakthrough, but where you mm -hmm. you're not releasing that forgiveness of your enemies, God's going to keep you right where you're at. It's almost to the point of how mm -hmm. how sure. Israel the Israelites roamed in, in the desert for forty years. That they that they they roamed around and and they didn't do anything they they didn't really do anything that was spectacular and and it's it was a a stagnant point where nothing happened mm -hmm. nothing was great and and until you're able to release that forgiveness in your enemies I feel like that that you're gonna stay there because God is mm -hmm. is wanting you in this hour to release that unforgiveness that you have for your enemies and right now i'm i'm gonna be the first one because i'm gonna go ahead and start doing this first of all I, i've done it at church but but i'm gonna do it again i'll do it publicly that's fine uh but i ask god to forgive my enemies for the things that they did to hurt me but not only that is i want i want to ask forgiveness to the people that i've hurt over the years come on because I think that that too is something that we have to do before we can move on in the spirit to be able to do the work that God called us to do. Because if there is unforgiveness in our hearts, we can't move forward with, with the love of God. We can't do it. So, so right now, I, I'll be the first one to start. And feel free to say that, to proclaim that in the, in the chat. I, I ask for forgiveness from my, the people that consider me an enemy. Whether it's it's a it's somebody from my past, whether it's a it's an old church, whether it was a man or woman of God that that might have gotten upset with me in the past, I ask for forgiveness of that. And and I, I plead the blood of Jesus of that because I feel like that when that forgiveness is unlocked, that that you're gonna feel an instant gratification of the Holy Spirit in your life. I really believe that. I really believe that. I, I'm laughing. It's not as much joy at this right this second. It's not at what you said. It's what I'm seeing. As yep. you were speaking um, prophetically, I was getting a vision, and it was just putting what you said, cementing it in. When you forgive, I just saw the rod, Aaron's rod that turned into the serpent, okay, swallowing Pharaoh's serpents. Those serpents of unforgiveness Ew. that bit you and envenomated you. <laughs> Oh, here comes the rod of God, and it is swallowed and gobbled in her. Mm. <laughs> mm. Because I understand something, saints of God. We have to be broken before God can start using us. God has to break us from the inside out because we have so many things that are in our life that that has to be pushed out. Mm -hmm. And and there's things that we might not even know with our carnal mind that is going on. That's why I'm saying it starts with forgiveness. It starts with forgiveness. And if we join as a body of Christ and we ask for that forgiveness and we move in that forgiveness, God is going to start moving and he's going to start trusting more. And he's going to start saying, my child, thank you. Thank you. Some of us, God's been waiting for us to forgive for over a decade. Ooh. And y'all know I had that rheumatoid arthritis. And I was stagnant. I was stuck in a place where even though God had what? I was healed of sterility. I was healed of so many different things. But mm -hmm. that RA, suddenly it just kept getting worse and worse and worse to where finally they diagnosed me with it. Okay? And said I had it. Um, and I was like, but God, what? Why? Why? And he finally told me it was unforgiveness. And so what did I do over the next three days? I kept, I knew it was for my mother and father. And so I knew, and it was real things. They weren't perceived wrongs. They were actually heinous things. If I told you, you'd be like, oh, you know, so it, but I just, I kept going, well, I do, but then it comes right back. And finally God stepped in and he said, forgiveness is not a feeling. When you feel like you have not forgiven them and some of these thoughts and things come back, you tell them to go and to shut up. And you just tell the devil, which God told me to say, he said, tell the devil, no, forgiveness is a choice. I announce 
I had forgiven them for, named it, forgave them, and every time that feeling of unforgiveness came back, I just said, nope, I already forgave them. It's a choice, not a feeling. And what happens? Within just a few days, my feelings lined up behind me. They had no choice. If I go this way with my steering wheel, the back of my car, I'm in a Nissan, okay? The back of my Nissan is going to go. If my feelings are the back of my car, or if I'm in a train, the caboose, you know, hello, the caboose is going to have to follow. Eventually, it's going to whip in line. It has to. It has no choice. Um, and so choose that because I had that bitterness. And God healed me. It's been medically documented. And he removed me out of that stagnant place and power came into my life. It was just so amazing. My ministry just took off. It was so amazing. And, and, and something else, Prophet Tiffany, that I want to do. And, and somebody else is suffering from this as well. And, and, I, and I, I thank God so much for what he's doing tonight because I'm telling you, God is showing out tonight. Yes, he and, is. And I love it. Um, I, I'm actually asking for forgiveness tonight because uh, at certain points in my ministry, um, I've tried to speed the process up. Mm. Oh, wow. I've, I've tried to speed mm. the process up. And, and I ask for forgiveness of that. And there's somebody else that is here that, that is experiencing that same thing. You, you have a... Um, feeling that that you were never good enough, and and I battled that for years. I battled that for years. That why why would God use me? I think we've all at least felt it one time in our life, yeah. and but you are are you're feeling that way of God. I you're not using me. I, I'm sitting here in the dry land right now. Uh, I feel like the dry bones before they were prophesied over, you know and. And it's, um, it's, it's a, a thing that if, if you let go of that, if, if you just let go of the fact that when's God going to use me, that you're going to start seeing a breakthrough happen, that you're going to start seeing God's going to open up more doors in your life because you're, you're now trusting in God to open the doors instead of you opening the doors. And I've had to ask forgiveness for that because that, that is a, that is a process that, that sometimes it's really hard because we want to get ahead of God. We want to get ahead of God because we're so excited. We're so pumped up. We're so ready to go for the things of Christ, but we have to show patience. We have to show patience for those doors to be opened by, by the one that can open them. Yeah. And so, so somebody here is experiencing that in their ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're experiencing that in their ministry. And God's telling you to slow down. Take your time. Because in this season, I'm preparing you to be able to step into where it is that you need to step. Yeah. So, so I praise God for that. I praise God for that patience <laughs> and, and for the ability to not only w through wisdom to see that patience, but to also see it and then repent of it. That, that's, that's the big part. Because I feel like that when we get ahead of God, we've got to forgive, our, forgive for that. We, we've got to ask God to forgive us because we can't ever get ahead of God in that situation. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I've seen that in my own life. I can remember thinking, uh, well, actually, I had a couple of different scenarios happen. A man walked up to me one time and he said, Sister, you need to walk through this big old door. Some, some, I was offered something. You need to walk through this door. This is for you. Da, 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 da. And they were a pastor. And immediately what literally came up out of my spirit and shot out of my mouth. And it was like I was hearing my own self speaking. And it said this. I can't go through that door. There's a giant waiting there to kill me. I'm not ready yet. It's going to eat me. And I was mm. like, I was like, wait a second. Was that was that? me or was that but it was the truth when I took that word to the Lord and I said Lord was that you or did some something weird come out my mouth he said no that was me they needed to know they're trying to push you ahead of me there's things they don't recognize or understand that are flaws in you okay they were uh weaknesses you maybe we don't want to call them flaws but there were weaknesses in me had I been propelled through that door several years back it would have killed me. It would have crushed me. I wasn't ready. I didn't know how. Number one, I didn't have proper boundaries. Had somebody come up and said, you need to do such and such, I'd have been like, instead of going, um, that's not in line with the vision God has for me, or um, that's uh, for a different season in my life, or, I, you know, I didn't know some of these things. I would have done what? Oh, they're a leader. I better go do it. 
and I would have been crushed and killed. Not because they were being evil, but because I didn't, I was not mature enough to go through the door that in the past some people had wanted me to go through. They thought I was, but God said no, because he knew. He knew that he knew that he knew he had to perfect me in a better way. Yes. Okay. And so, um, and then there's other times where I'm like, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And God is like, uh, it's coming, it's the promise, and it's not now. Yes. And then there's times he surprises me, he's overrun me. It's like the door pursued and overtook me. And I'm like, how did I get here? How did this happen? Because I was just uh, praying with the Lord. Okay? I was just praying with God. It was just me and him. And, you know, presence, will op it'll go before you and open up doors. And you'll be in a door going, how did I get here? It's called favor. Become friends with the king. Yes. 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 Jeez. Yeah. What happened? Uh, you, you just froze up again, prophet. It's fine. <laughs> Technology is good at times and bad at others. Yes. Um, my phone, um, I took it out of the cover because I thought, well, if I take it out of the cover, maybe it won't get as hot and it'll be better. This has been a better news feed. I, my apologies, you guys, for it rocking the phone. You keep seeing my hands in the phone. You're probably going, why doesn't she have it in a holder? What's the deal with the phone? Well, I'm trying different things, and I have noticed if the phone gets hotter, it begins to um, not overheat in a da dangerous manner, but if it gets warm, it starts breaking the signal up wirelessly for whatever reason. So I've got an ice pack behind it, no joke. But I took it out of the cover thinking that would be better. Yeah. Honestly, it's staying cooler in the otter box than out of it, which makes no <laughs> sense to me. But at any rate, <laughs> the little things you learn, and y'all are our test subjects. We love y'all. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and and I, I just I, I love being able to see the, the chat of everybody that, that's commenting. Uh, it's such that I tell you, God is moving uh, in everybody that's watching this broadcast tonight. Yes. Just one thing after another, after another. And, and I, I just pray right now, I'm, I'm just going to say that, that everybody that's on this broadcast and, and, and we're, we're pushing a hundred people right now, which is awesome. Continue mm -hmm. to share this broadcast. Let people come in. Let's, let's praise God together. Let's, let's talk to God together. And I just ask right now that, that God just blesses everybody that is in this broadcast tonight, that no matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. no matter what situation that is arising in your life, no matter what uh, enemy attack is coming upon you, no matter what financial burdens mm. that you're having, God is going to help you in a way that you, you haven't experienced in, in a season yet because we, we have hit August. And, and August is, is, of course, the eighth month, which is also the month of new beginnings. And yes. Apostle Jonathan Stidham, I, I'm like you. I don't like to name drop, but he is my apostle, and, and I love him. Oh, uh, is he really? Yes, Aww. and, and I, I, I love him more than anything in this world. Aww. And and he, he had a message uh, right before a conference that he said that the month of August is going to be your comeback. Mm, and on. and I just have to repeat it because I, I'm believing in it so much that just like we talked about uh, people that, that have, have strayed away from the ministry and strayed away from God are now coming mm. home. August is going to be your comeback. And, and I just cannot get his words through the Holy Spirit out of my mind because it, it has touched me so much that, that we're, we're now understanding that it's going to be a comeback season for us. And, and you need to accept that. You need to accept that God is, is drawing you home. And the way I look at it is, remember that um, when we were kids and we used to play tug of war on, on the, the playground. And, and there would be one team over here and there'd be another team on the other side. And you're <laughs> pulling. You're trying to pull to see who's going to win. Well, oh, yeah. we're on one end of that rope and God's on the other end. And God is pulling you toward that promise that he said it's not a mud yes. box, it's a promise and yes. god is pulling that pulling that rope and pulling it and saying my child you're now loosening up to the things you need to remember my promise and he keeps pulling you he keeps pulling you toward that promise let him pull you to your promise do not lay your head on your bed tonight until you tell god i accept my promise that you have given me 
we Come out. cannot go another night without yes. accepting the promise and accepting the fact that salvation is in your grasp. Come on. We cannot go to sleep tonight until that happens. Yes. Accept who you are in Christ. <laughs> you may be sitting there right now saying that I'm the worst person in the world. I'm, I'm no good to nobody. Ooh. You are everything in the kingdom of God. That's right. You are a child of the kingdom, and you are a child of Jesus, and you need to realize your worth. So my Bible plainly states that what is loosed on earth is also loosed in heaven. So right now we proclaim in Jesus' name that you are the head and not the tail, that you are the top and not the bottom. And I am proclaiming that in your life so that you can take up your cross that you carry, and you can move forward in the ways of Jesus, and you will live your life for him and nothing yes. else. <clears throat> I proclaim that in your life in Jesus' name. I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a lot of different things with regards to healing right now. Um, yes. Who on here has a liver issue? And I think it's cirrhosis of the liver. I think it's mm. cirrhosis. Somebody asked for liver. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Um, are you on here? Cirrhosis of the liver or liver cancer? Stage four something. I mean, whatever it is, the doctors have said it's bad. Um, obviously, I, you know, I'd be dead right now. Wouldn't have any kids. Wouldn't have a life, basically, had I believed the doctors. They told me, you know, 13 years ago, they said I had a life expectancy of four years. Buy the casket, get the burial site. There you go, ma'am. And it was like, uh, no, that's not what God promised me. So uh, please put on here. I'm trying to see my comments don't seem to be moving. Oh, no wonder. We we did have somebody in chat earlier that, that did say they were having problems of the liver. Okay, no wonder it didn't look like anybody has commented because I was somehow back in the comments. <laughs> okay, so if y'all see anyone else on here, um, there's liver. And then I'm also picking up on uh, broken bones. I'm mm. literally seeing somebody with a splintered or shattered bone. A splintered or shattered bone. <laughs> okay, somebody put on here the about their liver. Oh, that's Eddie. Yes, I, okay. You and I had talked with regards to something about the liver as well. <laughs> we just decree and declare right now any liver issues, toxins, um, damage, all of that has been reversed. Yes. Yes. Why? Daddy is good, good daddy. And according to Isaiah 53, 3 through 5, Jesus is for your diseases, took sickness and illnesses way away from you. When you eat your food and drink your water, the Bible says that it causes God. You know, you thank him for it. It causes God to remove sicknesses and diseases far from you. That's what the word says. The word also says Holy Spirit gives life to your mortal flesh. Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. He's on the inside of you. So according to Romans 8 and 11, we just decree and declare life, new life, and life in Jesus as Jesus is in heaven, so are we in this earth. His yeah, liver doesn't have an issue. His liver is perfect. So I decree and declare yes, your liver is yes. perfect. There's nothing wrong with your liver enzymes. Those enzymes are lying. Do you know I know people? I actually know people who went to the doctor. The doctor said your liver enzymes are crazy. It's got to be cancer. We prayed for them. They went back. The liver enzymes were still crazy, but a little better, and they couldn't find any kind of cancer. Why? Mm. Because Satan wanted that individual to agree with a diagnosis, to get those evil, fearful words planted in there. Come on now. And yes. it ended up not being liver cancer. Had they believed for it, had they not gone for prayer, come on. So we're just come saying on. you're healed of that in the name of Jesus. Jesus. If that's Jesus. you, if that's a relative, claim that right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 My mm. I can't see all the comments. I can see quite a few of them. Somebody said Jeff, Jeff, the Jeff Wade is, is saying, Lord, remove the darts from my liver. Okay. Praise the Lord. Jeff, we pray for you tonight. <clears throat> Amen. Accept that tonight. Accept that healing in Jesus' name. Mm. Who is that needing... Oh, we just speak right now with that pain in your stomach, darling. Yes. I just saw you comment mm. that. Um, that pain in your stomach. We just command that that mm. 
I'm yeah. seeing like an acid, a greasy something. And we just decree that the Lord of God, you know, the oil, healing balm of Gilead, go in there and literally cause all of that burning pain up into here to reverse the effects. And if there's any kind of damage, hiatal hernias, if there's any kind of ulcerations in there, all of that is sealed up, closed up, healed over, just like if you were a newborn uh, babe in that area. Uh, but, you know, functioning properly like a, you know, teenager. Come on. All that's just renewed, restored, healthy, and whole. We rebuke pain. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. How is your uh, stomach feeling now? Let us know how you're feeling right now. What are you feeling in your body, honey? We command that not to go in Jesus' name. Mm. I'm, I'm, God is, is speaking to me about three people on this broadcast that is having neck issues with, with mm. not, not the fact of like a broken neck or anything like that, but, but you, you've got problems with nerves going up and down your neck. And, and it could be a, a situation that is connected to your spine as well. If that's you, let us know because I we need to pray for you over this situation because uh, one, at least one of you has went and got multiple reports yes. of uh, from the doctor because you're just you're going from doctor to doctor trying to find out exactly what's going on and nobody can answer that. And and I, I'm I'm receiving from God that that you are believing in that healing. But but it's there's there's a lot of doubt there. There's a lot of doubt underneath the surface that is that's because the pain will come and go. When when the pain goes, your faith is up there. But when the pain comes back, you're you're you you tense up, and and you start asking God, why are you continuing this with me? So so Margie I, I, says I'm, that first. We we need we need to pray for this situation because not only is this a prayer. For your healing but this is also a prayer for your increased faith because we we need to have that faith to know because that's how you get healed is through the faith that god is going to do it yeah so i believe that and and, and if that's you let let us know if you're having a, a neck issue with with nerves in your neck where the pain just margie. hurts so bad and jeff margie and jeff margie and jeff well i, I want to pray over this right now prophet and, and prop, if you pray in the spirit, we need to pray ab about this situation right now. Lord, I ask right now for, for prayer over Jeff and Margie right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for a loosing of, of your healing angels right now to come before both of them, Lord. And God, that, that the healing that they have asked for for so long is going to come to them right now in Jesus' name. In faith believing. You say that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in the midst. Lord, we accept that. We know that you are here with us, and we ask for that healing upon them. We ask for those nerves to stop in Jesus' name and for them to realign with where they're supposed to be. We ask for if there's any bone problems or anything that, that is going on in their neck, that those bones will realign. We ask for the crooked things in their neck to become straight in Jesus' name. We are asking right now for the next time that if they go to a doctor, that it is a miraculous healing right now in Jesus' name, that they are healed of this problem that has plagued them for so long. God, not only that, but heal them, and God, give them increased faith. Give them increased faith that they know that you are still the healer, you are still the way maker, and you are still the promise keeper in Jesus' name. We release that healing in Jesus' name right now. And God, I know that we are over the airwaves of the internet, but I believe that you work over the airwaves of the internet just as much yeah. as you do if they were in person with us. God, we claim that healing in Jesus' name. We decree it and declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Patricia kept saying the knot was going down. The knot was going down. Now she says the knot is gone. Praise yes. Lord. Praise Lord. God. Gone, you guys. Our prayers are working here. And now she has also said, though, that there's pain in the chest. So we speak to whatever's causing that pain in the chest. 
if it is anything from muscle fatigue to um, whatever that is. And I believe some of that is the enemy wants to We just say that pain is a lie. Because pain you go, uh, you're a Come on, I honestly am seeing like the no thing. It's just pain. So, I just Ish. saw demonic hands literally that were doing that number and loose you. You've been loose. 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 We have to realize that the power of God wanting to heal, because one, we got to remember that that by the stripes of Jesus we're healed anyway. So, so why why do we have so much sickness? Why do we have so many ailments? Why do we have so many so many problems with our body? It's because we forget about the promise. We forget about the promise that Jesus bore two thousand years ago. Wow. He died on the cross for those for those pains and those aches and those body problems. He already paid oh. the price for your healing. Patricia mm. says the pain is gone. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Woo. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I'm gonna Jesus. I'm going to get up and Holy Ghost dance in a minute. Yes. I see Prophet David on here. He and his wife. I believe his mm -hmm. wife's name is Martha. Um. I think I called her Marsha the other day, or I may have it backwards. But um, <laughs> anyway, bless y'all. And one of the things I'm seeing on you right now is I'm seeing you grabbing, sir, um, prophet. I'm seeing you grabbing these large uh, spiritual creatures, you know, of the enemy. They're the enemy. You know, I'm seeing you. It, they're not lower level little things. I'm seeing you on the high planes with the Lord in the upper echelon glory realms of God and there's this golden um mantle that you're mantled with that's thrown over you it's not loosely thrown over you it looks like it from the back just because it's you know the wind of God has picked it up but it's on you it can't be removed from you your fire isn't going out but accelerating there's an acceleration it's more of that lighter fluid which is also the love of God it's the love factor and the more you're pressing into the love of God the more you're pressing in to see the heart of God's people to love mm. and to care for them God is advancing you higher and higher and higher and you're going into multiple dimensions you're going into <laughs> arenas that God is sending you um you know, I'm even seeing you whisking, whisking, being whisked away by the Holy Spirit, various mm -hmm. places Ooh. where you pop up and do an assignment and pop away like Philip did. You know, Philip didn't know until he was on the road like, oh, well, what's going on? It says he listened. You know, it was like he's like they're going, well, I'm here for a reason. What am I here for? You know, and so it'll be like you, it'll just. You know, it may be in the middle of the night. It may be whatever these things are, but you're going to be, it's newness. I'm just seeing all this newness, but I saw you take these things down with ease. You easily walk up into people's lives and they're struggling. They're having a thing. And it's like you and your wife are fatherly and motherly to these people. And although uh, you're not doing all the warfare for them, you actually come in at times in divine appointments when God has that placed you in their life to really be a buffet thing to where you grab that thing and you fling it to where it does not come back on that person. And they're able to get their head above water where they don't sink down to a watery grave that the enemy intended. They get their head above water and then God uh, continues the rest of it to get them up walking on the water, to get them up walking Shoot. or flying in the name of Jesus. Oh, shoo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I shouldn't. Mm. 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 Prophet, did you feel that shift in the Holy Spirit I right then? Yeah, I did. Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus. Lord ain't done tonight. He's not, not done. He's, he's, he, I think he's just getting started. That's, that's for sure. Shoo. 
I, feel I right now that that okay. if there is somebody right now that I, I saw somebody earlier posting about a broken heart, I, I want to take that a step further. I, I, I want to take that a step further, um, and and I do want to want to welcome uh, Apostle Tanya Stidham to the broadcast. She is a glorious woman of God, and and I I just I, I thank her for being here. I'm honored to, that that she is here. So thank you, thank you, Apostle, for that. Oh, but but I I want to take that a step further, and God God is is laying on my heart about loneliness. Mm. There's some people that are on our broadcast. We're going to watch by replay that that is is having a really rough time with loneliness. It, it may be the fact that you've been alone for a long time, or it could be the fact that you are, are sitting alone in a dark place right now, that there's a dark place that's trying to oversee you. It's almost like it's trying to wrap a blanket around you of loneliness. And, and it's not really depression. It's not depression. It's more of a, a loneliness that's just trying to wrap itself around you. And, and part of you is, is almost saying that it feels kind of good because it is warm. It, it's, it's like a blanket. But, but we need to speak against that loneliness tonight. Come on. We need to speak mm -hmm. against that, that mm -hmm. attack of loneliness that's trying to, be, trying to be brought over you. Because what that's doing is it's covering the light of God in your Come life. On. It, it's covering it's covering the light and, and it, it's it's you know how like when you were kids and you'd get scared after you after you snuck and watched a scary movie when you weren't supposed to and you would cover yourself up with a blanket to hide from the to hide from whatever was scaring you it's like that is what's going on that blanket is over top of you and it's blocking out the light and so god is is having a hard time getting in He's having a hard time getting into where that, that place is at because you kind of like that darkness. So if that's you, we need to pray about that. We need to pray that God will loose that darkness of loneliness off yeah. of your life. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit rising yes. up in me that it's more than one person. It's yes. more than one person. The Holy Spirit <laughs> is saying if you believe that this can be gone, it'll be gone with, for you tonight. Because it's God is speaking in that suddenly tonight, and He does not want you to be lonely anymore tonight. He doesn't want you to have that feeling of, of worthlessness that you're feeling right now. He wants you to accept who you are in the kingdom of God. And if that's you, we need to we need to take that to God, and we need to have release that. But you but you need to believe that it will be gone. Come on. I mean, God is showing in my spirit a blanket yeah. going over your head. And, and it's almost a good feeling for you because it's keeping you warm and, and cozy. But, th but, then, but then all of a sudden, God oh. brings back to your remembrance, this isn't how I'm supposed to be. Come on. This isn't who I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be joyful. I'm supposed to be a, a, a child of God that, that wakes up with, with an unction to help people and and be around people and all that. But see, that loneliness is not wanting you around people. You've missed church a long time because of this loneliness. Oh, come on. Come you on. missed church a long oh. time because you yeah. don't want to be around people. It doesn't want you to be around people, so you stay inside. So if, if, if that is you, you need to speak up. We need to pray that this thing is gone from you in Jesus' name tonight. Because I don't know how much longer that you're going to be able to take it. Come on. And as you were speaking, as you were praying, and I really feel like God wants you to put your mouth on this and pray this out, yes. uh, Apostle Brian. Uh, one of the things I saw was, as you were saying this about that blanket, I saw Father God come in with his hands of the Holy Spirit and rip that blanket off of somebody. Yeah. And as you, yeah. it is, this was like three seconds before you mentioned it was trying to hide the fire and light of God. And I saw flame. As soon as the blanket was ripped off, I saw the flame rising. And the person went, oh! And it was like for the first time in a long time, they took a true deep breath of God in. That thing was trying to, uh, it'd be like a wet blanket. If you're on fire, you don't throw a wet blanket on fire if you want a fire. It was trying to suffocate you and put your flame out. But Absolutely. no more in the name of Jesus. No more. By Absolutely. Jesus. Let's let's pray for this. Yes, and, and I want you, that whoever is, is experiencing this, I need you to be in faith believing.
that this thing is going to be taken away from you and it is going to be torn away from you tonight because God is, is looking for your faithfulness and he's looking for your belief that it is going to go away. And, and for those of you that are praying in the spirit, continue to pray in the spirit because God is getting ready to do a miraculous work and he's getting ready to, to deliver some people from something that has plagued them for a lot longer time than it should have. So let, let's let's pray about that right now. Lord God, we are coming to you with a humble heart right now and a joyful <laughs> heart. We are asking for the people that are experiencing loneliness, that are experiencing that depression, that, that feeling of suffocation, <laughs> that God, we are praying right now in the mighty name of Jesus, mm. that God, that you release this from their life right now, Lord, just as, as when, when Jesus uh, took his last breath, the, the curtain in the Holy of Holies ripped in half, and it opened up a way for us to speak to Jesus, I, I release right now, in Jesus' name, a tearing of the blanket that is over the people of loneliness, that is over the people of depression, Not that is over the, the people that are being suffocated yeah. by the enemy. Yeah. We release it in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. We release it to never come back. Mm. We cast it out now in the name yeah. of Jesus to the abyss where it was created and where it will go back to and never return to these people. Mm -hmm. I pray for a breath of fresh mm -hmm. air. Just like you did in Acts chapter 2 at the day of Pentecost. You come in like a rushing wind. I pray that people are feeling a rushing wind right now. In Jesus' name, that they're feeling the air of the Holy Spirit. They're feeling the air of angel wings come into their house right now where they're at. And yeah. God, that you are preparing a time for them to raise up in joy. And you are raising a time for them to never deal with this situation again. That God, that after this veil is ripped off of them, yeah. Yeah. that is going to open doors of joyfulness Woo! and doors of happiness. And they're going to be able to go back to church again and see people and talk to people and be able to be delivered of other things, God, that may be plaguing their life. God, I pray that in Jesus' name. I pray right now that no principality will be bring forth against these people that are feeling that loneliness. Yeah. Holy Ghost, you're here, and we shoot. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. You're just a good Jesus. God. We thank you. We thank you for God, the the victory that you give us and the breakthrough that you give us, and God for delivering good people from the things that the enemy is trying to kill us with. We rebuke you, and we rebuke you from these good people that you're trying to take out. God, heal them in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. I'm seeing fire coming out of people's eyes. That's just proper sight. God's giving you proper perception, proper sight. You're seeing and viewing your situations and circumstances in, in a new light in the name of Jesus. Some of you just need to look in the mirror or even just decree and declare in the middle of your den. Step up, stand up, and start decreeing and declaring. I am happy. I am joyful. I am. I have purpose. I have a great life. I don't have a good life. I got a great life. I have great expectation. I have great desire. I have great hunger. I thirst. I'm decreeing, you know, we're decreeing and declaring this over you right now. But he says, proper sight for my people. Proper sight of God is a flaming fire. It'll burn out improper perceptions. It'll burn out that thing that the enemy wants you to be focused on. Come in with these little thoughts and highlight things, you know. Uh, your mental, who knows what as well as torment. We even speak against mental torment. Go in the name of Jesus. Mm. And you'll be focused on how God views your life and situations according to the word of God yes. and not in accordance to what Satan wants you to see. If I had focused on what the doctors had said or what I saw in the natural, I never would have had children. I never would be where I am today. I wouldn't even be alive. I'd be dead in the grave. Oh. Proper sight for your people, oh God. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh, the, the fire of God is, is falling upon people right now. 
Ooh. And and I I know that there are people right now that that mm. is so warm on the inside, especially in their chest area right now mm. that that they don't know what I mean. I'm sure you know now what's taking place, but you've never felt it before. You you've never felt the fire of God burning things out of you on the inside. And and I just thank God for the fire that that is brought forth. And and the fire that that kindles us and 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 fills our lamps and allows us to be able to realize in our at the moment that the Holy Spirit starts moving that the enemy is up to no good. And I thank you for that discernment. I thank you for for the people of God that is realizing that's typing in the chat saying I, the enemy is no more. And Come on. I thank you God for for opening people's mm. eyes, taking those blinders off of people for not understanding when the enemy is trying to attack and slow you down. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for the fire of God that burns in us and that 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 fire never is going to be put out in your people, Lord. Come on. Gina. Oh. Mm. Just no. to encourage you, Ken O'Neill, he said that um he uh, saw fire i think it was he said he had his eyes closed but when he did he saw a vision as you were right before you began to speak on the fire he saw fire in front of you and i he just began to see the fire so that's just confirmation people are saying they're feeling the fire they keep commenting how they're feeling yes. the fire of god and some of you have been healed in your body right now take a minute yes. to reflect and you're going to realize the headache's gone and you you didn't even put on here for us to pray for the headache but you're like it's not yes. here anymore yes Whatever the ailment was in your body, mm -hmm. it's just not there anymore because you got in an anointed setting, an anointed situation. And I really feel like um, I want to get into something about exposing something, exposure and abuse. Did you have anything mm -hmm. else you needed to uh, mention right now? Yeah, you, go, you go ahead, Prophet. Okay. I am speaking right now. There are several of you in situations, either in the workplace. I'm really seeing the workplace. And uh, that could be church settings. It could be uh, political settings. It could just be ordinary uh, marketplace settings. Okay? But I'm also seeing this in people's homes as far as abuse or rape and molestation. But I am grabbing hold of something called abuse i'm grabbing hold of something called um it's a hiddenness of the enemy and we're going to pull it right now i'm grabbing a hold of it by faith whatever's in your life whatever's going on in your situation and for somebody several of you actually you need this exposed and you need to be heard and you need it to be listened to to save your life or the life of somebody else. We pull these demonic things into the light of God, into be an exposure. And whatever these situations mm. are, you've dealt with it privately between you and God. You dealt with it one-on-one -on -one with that individual. God says this is public exposure now. We're taking mm. it to a whole new level, and this isn't a lack of love. Love covers sin. It does not cover abuse. There are certain types of sin that God on purpose will, he'll give that person time to repent when that time and space and half is over. We pull that into the light. Now may it be exposed to the light of God. And if that means public exposure, so be it in the name of Jesus. But that we command those things, the molestation, the rape and abuse of that measure in nature to yes, God. Yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. God. Yes. Why? Yes. 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 And somebody wanted to know scripture on that. I think it's Zechariah 2 and 5. I may be wrong about that scripture, maybe 3 and 2, something. But you can um, look that up. That's the one um, that talks about abuse, I believe, being exposed. Uh, and, of course, we all know the scripture uh, that talks about love covers sin. Um, but I have, there's two or three scriptures. I wrote some articles. I've, I've written so many abuse articles, it's not funny, but... Um, I was probably because I had been abused most of my life until God allowed me to and showed me how to set up proper boundaries. Not all abuse that I suffered was due to improper boundaries, especially the childhood abuse. Come on, you know, you can only do so much. Come on. But as you get older in life, if you've not been trained how to put up proper boundaries, people just kept on abusing me. Yes, they were unsafe for me. Some of these people were not unsafe for other people. Why were they unsafe for me then? Because I didn't have proper boundaries. They might ask me to do something where somebody else, 10 other people said, no, uh-uh. And they're like, oh, I'm not dealing with that. No. 
But me, I, oh, I was a people pleaser. I wanted to fit in. I wanted a family. I just, oh, if I'll just bend over backwards, somebody will love me. I had no value for myself. So I'm speaking value right now. Somebody, I just uh, decree and declare, Holy Spirit is wooing you and showing you, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a lack of humility. God will balance the two because as he began to pull me up and out of the abuse and to set up proper boundaries, I would literally fluctuate between the two, and he'd get me if I went off into pride, like, I am, I am, I, you know. He'd go up, come on now, up, let's cut that up, back over here, back over to humility. But humility is not putting your foot under somebody, your neck under somebody else's boot Jesus. for them to crush your neck. Okay? I can be just like this on the field with somebody with a title and me without a title. Mm, this shit because a leader is supposed to be humble and they do what? They actually get under believers and push them to their destiny. They accelerate them yes. to the place they're supposed to be. Okay, I didn't value myself, so I would fluctuate between mm. oh, pitiful little old me, I'm no valuable of nothing. To um, you know, one minute I'd be like, as God began to show me who I was, then sometimes it would get a little puffed up, and he'd have to go, eh, eh, come on, all right, we'd get that staff in the rod and go up, oh, sheep, come on, come on, back over this way, baby, back over this way. So I just decree and declare right now for whoever that is, God is fixing you from the inside out. He's going in the mind in recesses and regions where you didn't want to open to God. These are dark doors. These are doors uh, that you swore to it. You'd never open and look in again. But he <clears throat> says, I love you too much to let that happen. Trust me. I'm holding your hand. We're going to open some scary doors. And I want to speak to somebody. It's a very, very scary door. But God loves you too much to let the scary doors be the skeleton in the closet that when you don't want it to open, that's when it seems to always open and fall out on you. In the most inopportune times, that's how devil loves to do that. But how does Holy Spirit love to do it? He's going to hold you by the hand and walk you into those dark doors and say, let's go back over that thing that happened to you all those years ago. You know, in that car when that boy raped you. You know, back in there when your father did such and such. You know, when your mama or your granny or your uncle. Don't be fearful of it. Don't assume because these things are coming up that it's unforgiveness. It could be. But don't always assume it's of the devil. Go and say to God, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm hearing you. What do you want me to know about this ugly situation to get beyond it? Because if you don't address that pain, it's going to fester, be an infection that takes you down. And I don't want to see you go down. Mm. And God is rooting for you, and he doesn't want you down. He is popping the infection. He's taking you to every demonic door where something was hidden in it due to abusive situations. And he's popping, just like if you got a zit on your face, he's popping the infection mm -hmm. out. And then he's going to go in and wash and cleanse it and walk you through it to where on the other side, the memory is there. But the negative, disgusting feelings and emotions are no longer attached to it. Like when he healed me when my son died. I can talk about my son dying without being a wreck in a, in a puddle on the floor. With people going, you know, I can talk about it now and still love my child and miss him without being a wreck. Okay? I can talk about how my father molested me without being a wreck or weeping while I'm talking about it. Okay? Why? Because it's still a memory, but the negative emotion tied to that memory is not trying to take me out and kill me. So I speak a release of healing, emotional health, and mental. God's going in the mind with a knife. This word. He's going in with Holy Spirit and power, and he is eradicating the thing that tried to take you out in the name of Jesus. Amen. What a what a word, prophets. What a word. And 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 we're and and the thing is, the saints of God, is that mm. when when we start when when the anointing falls and the Holy Spirit starts moving all over the place. Whenever the Holy Spirit starts moving in your your house across the nation, across the world, in, in broadcasts like this, understand we're not we're not going to even represent the fact that the enemy's trying to mess right now. We're not going to even worry about that. 
<laughs> because we're because that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to to do things to get your mind off of what's taking place. We're not going to do that. So so understand that we're we are decreeing and declaring right now in the name of Jesus that the enemy get under our feet. We rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. And that's it. That's all we have to do. But what but what I heard from you on that prophet is the fact that I blocked him. Thank y'all so much for telling me that. Thank y'all. The 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 word of God, anytime that you are in a setting like this, folks, expect these kind of things to happen. Mm -hmm. Because 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 the, the move of God is moving so strong. It's moving oh. so strong and, and, and the enemy's not happy about that. So when that happens, happens. Pray. pray. You pray in pray the name in of the Jesus. Name. Amen. So so we, we, we ask for that. We ask God that you continue to move and that, that you continue to focus on, on what's taking place right now. And we, we are asking right now that, that for people that are coming in still continually, we're asking that, that right now that if there are people in our midst that is not saved, I ask right now in Jesus' name that, that, that you look at your heart. Look at your heart and see that you have a Savior that died for you. You have a Savior that, that died a massive death for you so that you could have eternal life through him. I'm going to try to grab my and And, and I, I know right now that, that there are some of you that have, that's already said at the broadcast that, that people in your family needs to be saved. I, I, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, that your family members will be saved. I yeah. pray that if there are people in our midst tonight that need to be saved, that tonight is the night that you get saved, that you do not let your eyes close tonight until you know Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Sir, I can't save you. Prophet Tiffany can't save you. Come on. Your pastor can't save you. The Bible states that there is only one way, and that is through the Son, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him, you need to get to know him because he loves you more than anything on this world, anything in this universe. He loves you. Yes. And he died for you. I can't see the comments anymore on that. I got my computer out, and I don't know how badly the comments are behind. Um, because on the computer, you're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> doing this number. And I'm like, whoop. So I don't, like I said, I don't know how far behind these comments are. It's a little better. I can see some of your comments. I blocked that person. Thank you, Prophet Daniel. I didn't even realize you were on here. Thank you so much for that information. So we could block that individual. They were just saying some very, I guess, rude things. Um, thank y'all for watching our back. For him Absolutely. Here. <laughs> Absolutely. But but like I said, you know, anytime that you have a move of the Holy Spirit and people are being healed and people are being delivered, you're gonna have the enemy attack you. And and, oh. and that that's that's what was trying to creep in. But we rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I do wanna mm -hmm. I do want to take a second. Uh my apostle Jonathan Stidham is 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 on oh. tonight. Oh. I, I honor you tonight, Apostle. He is in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, getting ready to do a conference uh, with Apostle G uh, down in, in North Carolina. I wish I was there. I, I, I absolutely cannot express how much I wish I was there. Apostle, I honor you tonight. Thank you for tuning in. It is my honor that you are here because, because just like we are taught, it is nothing that I'm doing. It's nothing that Prophet Tiffany is doing. It is God. It is God that is doing the work in here tonight. We are just his vessel. We are just his vessel. And and, and mm -hmm. God forgive us if we ever forget that. If Come we on. ever forget that, God forgive us. And and I just ask right now that if, if you are, are feeling an unctioning of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. as we were talking earlier about you having a calling and and you turning from that calling and and straying away for a lot of years and now you're coming back. I, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, Prophet, but I, I'm, I know that there are some people that are here that is that this is speaking to them, and some people are not speaking up about it, and that's okay. But God is wanting you to know that you are a child of God mm -hmm. and that you yeah. have a calling upon your life. God doesn't stop just because we do. 
Let me repeat myself, saints of God. God doesn't stop because we do. So if you've got a calling on your life and you're coming back, you're going to start seeing that suddenly happen because this season of the suddenlies, God is moving quickly. We don't have time to continue to play around. We don't have time to continue playing church. Come on. We don't have time trying to uh, trying to be the next uh, the next Billy Graham. We don't have time for that, saints of God. We don't have time for it. And the reason why we don't have time for it is because God is coming back sooner than we know. Yes. He's coming back sooner than we know. So we need to get right. <clears throat> That's why that, that we're, we're having this broadcast is because the Holy Spirit's moving. The Holy Spirit has healed a lot of people tonight. The Holy Spirit has delivered people tonight. The Holy Spirit has, I'm sure that there's some salvations that we don't know about because of the people that have, have chatted. Yeah. But if you are feeling the Holy Spirit move, you need to, to proclaim that what is going on in your life publicly so you know what it what God can do. Let, yeah. let us pray for you. Let us pray for your situation. Let us pray for your for your calling to be restored back into into the bosom of God. Saints yeah. of God, we we don't have time to mess around anymore. We've got to be active in the kingdom. We cannot be lazy in the kingdom of God anymore. Just like that was spoken at our conference this past weekend. People, there are sinners that are doing more for the kingdom of God than we are as church people. <laughs> and, and we can't let that happen anymore. If, if you are, are out and about, it is our job to, to witness to somebody. It is our job. To, to say that word to somebody that if the Holy Spirit rises up when you're at the 7-Eleven and, and you're pumping gas and that person next to you and the Holy Spirit says, they need my touch. And you pass up on that touch. You have quenched the Spirit, saints of God. You have quenched the Spirit. And we've got to make sure that we are now becoming Holy Ghost filled fire warriors. That's what I'm seeing in my spirit yes. is that we got to become warriors of God again. We've got to become warriors that we are pressing forward and we're trying to save people that 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 need to be need to be touched by Jesus. That people that that have fallen back and they they've had enemy attacks. We gotta we gotta take a hold of those people and we gotta love them. And unfortunately, saints of God, some of those people are gonna be your enemies. Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. I wanna welcome Pastor Jojo Dawson. Um, Joe, I, Joe Dawson. All right. Yeah, Praise God. Him sign on. Uh, an awesome um, man of God and his wife. Yes, he is. Um, hopefully, we can um, do a video together as well. Uh, we had uh, been discussing that at some point. But um, I just absolutely feel so much love directed at people right now. Again, like mm, yeah. you had been discussing earlier on in the video about this is the time of those prodigals arising. This is the time of the no names coming up. The ones who no one's heard of, suddenly they're just out there doing what God's asked them to do. How again does that happen? It's just anyone on the live stream, ordinary people who just say, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes Lord. And become willing to do that, willing to do that. Yes, God. I don't know if you're still on here, um, Pastor Joe Dawson, but um I'm seeing, I'm getting a glimpse of you and your wife. Uh, it'd be like if you're driving in a Rolls Royce and the car has wings. It's really wild. <laughs> what I'm seeing you're on an awesome highway and then your mantles are lifted up in the wind of God and y'all and is, is actually acting, creating wind. Your mantles are acting like wings, creating winds behind you. Um, basically what I'm seeing from the Lord is, the ministry that you both do is creating momentum. You're being sped along right now in a royal procession in yeah. great 
I'm seeing the kingdom wealth, the wealth of the kingdom, yeah. your royalty. You know who you are, but this is a fun season for you and your wife. I mean, fun. I see you both smiling. God is showing me. He yeah. always shows me things right yeah. before they happen or as they're happening. And I'm really seeing y'all enjoying mm. this new highway that God has you on, this new door yeah. that's open yes. for y'all. You've gone, you're in there and there's so much bright white light. It's sunny mm, days yes. that are not hot and overbearing. It's sun-filled, lit days with the top down, the wind blowing through your hair, and you're enjoying each other, and you're enjoying what God has you doing. And it is oh so good. But there's also a lot of exposure, and I don't mean in a negative way. There's a new measure of people that you're reaching. It's going, well, I'm already seeing global. Maybe mm. you have a global ministry. I don't know, but I am seeing a much further reach. You went from yes, less to a whole lot more. I mean, like a 70% yeah. inf greater influence. Like, whoosh. so it's just yeah. amazing. <clears throat> just amazing. Yeah. And Kendra Gomez, if you're still on here, Kendra Gomez. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm seeing the Lord having you break ground. Yes, New God. ground, new move. Uh, let, let us know, either publicly yes, or privately, if this means anything with regards to your life. Yes. I'm seeing you breaking yes, ground. Um, with the new moving of the things of God in your life. You're breaking ground. It's new. And it's new. And it, it's your being obedient. You're breaking ground. That is just a word that I, I really feel like you need to run with that word. You need to hold it tight. You need to take it to the Lord and pray it out. Breaking ground. What does that mean for you in this season? What does it mean right now? I'd be quite interesting if you put on here what it is you're doing. <laughs> I can't go back to comments. Um, for whatever reason, this app is not letting me go back in the comments to see if you commented while I was talking. Yes, Jesus. Shoot, Prophet, I, I've I, I know that that she's been she's been speaking uh, about a word, and and normally, you know, it's the 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 Holy Spirit just comes in different different ways. But I, I'm I want to I want to talk to Becky Plank for a minute. Um because God has just released a word for you that, that I, it, it's this, this is uh, just uh, amazing to me because, because God is, you, you, you have waited for so long for God to open up things in your life. And, and you, it's, it's almost to the point, Becky, that, that you sit and you, you I, I, I see you sitting at a, at a table and you are questioning what God is going to do in your life. Mm -hmm. yes. What, what exactly is, is your purpose? Yes. What, what, what is my next step? And, and it's, it's not necessarily a stagnant that, that you're, that you're going through. It's, it's a, a season of, of not understanding what, what God is trying to hmm. do. And and God has plainly showed me, Becky, that that you are are standing at the top of the mountain right now. That you are overseeing your Jericho right now. It it is within view right now. Your Jericho is sitting there, ready for the picking. And what God is doing for you right now is God is preparing you to take your Jericho. Yes. In what in a season that may seem that God isn't even moving in your life, that God is slowly preparing you to take a hold of your Jericho and to be able to seize what the enemy has stolen from you. Amen. And and there's a lot. There's a lot that God is showing me, Becky, that that the enemy has stolen from you. And you are overseeing that. I need you to see that, Becky. I need you to see that you are on top of that mountain and below it is your Jericho. 
And God is saying, this is yours plus more. This is what the enemy has stolen from you. And this is what you're going to get back plus more. And you're going to do that by the faithfulness and the belief that you have in God. Come and on. you're going to be able to seize that. And not only are you going to see things like your finances starting to fix, but you're going to start seeing lost family members come in. You're going to see family members that you haven't talked to in years coming back to the fold yep. and being able to combine with you in the spirit. I plainly see that. And I see one particular family member that you haven't spoken to in a long time. And that family member is going to come home. Yes. <laughs> so you are in your Jericho moment, but God is preparing you. So you can't get in a hurry, Becky. You cannot get in a hurry because your Jericho is being prepared. We can't take it till God says we can take it. Come on. We can't take it until God says we can take it. And then you're going to start seeing, you're going to start seeing these things fall into place. And this is going to fall into place. And this is going to fall into place. You have got to keep believing and you have got to pray immensely in the spirit that God is going to deliver this to you. And you can't let the enemy take your Jericho again. Come on. You cannot let the enemy take your Jericho again. If you've got to get with the church, if you got to call up every prayer warrior that you know, Becky, you got to get them in agreement with you yes. so that the enemy does not try to take your Jericho because they're going to try to take it again. But in faith believing, I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus over your coming Jericho. And I plead the blood of Jesus over your family. And you are going to start seeing these things open up. When you start sensing that, you cannot let up in prayer. You cannot let up in, in faith believing because that's when God's going to accelerate and you're going to hit that Jericho full blown. Don't let him take it again. In Jesus' name, Amen. don't let him take your Jericho. Amen. My comments came back. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what's going on now and it's not very delayed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we've been on here a couple of hours, and I know that's usually what everybody can handle and take. Um, I just don't want to stop. I just love this. I'm right there with you. I'm just seeing... Um, uh, Young woman on here. Let me see who this is. Katie Morris. Katie Morris. Katie Morris. One of the things that I'm seeing with regards to your life is um, I'm seeing some, type, some, of some, type, of some type of school. Um, you're prospering. I want you. I want to tell you that oh God God's is God's causing God's you. God's to know answers and to know things that you normally would not be able to know because you're submitting to him, you're worshiping him, you're spending time with him. If you pray, as you spend time with the Lord, he actually gives you information that um, I don't mean you don't study, but I do know uh, by that I mean if you do study and then you get in a situation and you don't know, it's like you're going to know. You're actually going to know things and you don't even know how you know these things. Because when God wants you to pass a test, when God wants you to pass a thing, you know, we even have Holy Spirit school, come on, where you're in a classroom. Mm -hmm. um, when you're in situations spiritually, you'll, um, God is rooting for you. And as long as we say, okay, Lord, what's the answer to that? What do you want me to do in this situation? That's when you're passing the test. That's when you get it right there. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I'm seeing very nice connections relationally coming for you. Mm. Wow. Lots of sweet peace in these relationships. They're good ones. They're authored from the Lord. So we just speak right now for any relationships not authored of God. 
that when God comes in to shake the tree, and that's who we are, mm -hmm. that the wrong ones fall off to make room for the right ones. If we have connections that are wrong, that are trying to suck us dry, until they're removed, the good ones can't come and connect. You know, if I've got a plug plugged in the wall, and the outlet is full, and I need to plug something else in that I need to use. Suppose I'm done with the hair dryer, or suppose, you know, you know, that's an example, but suppose the hair dryer was no good for me and I needed to use the flat iron. Okay. If the flat iron is my destiny partner and I got a hair dryer plugged in, the, you know, the, the flat iron can't find the be plugged in. It's essentially like that. I know that's a silly example, but I'm just seeing these relationships in your life when you start seeing some. And I think they've already done this. Some have gone the way. They've just gone away. And you're like, whoa, what happened? God is making room for the correct ones right now in the name of Jesus. And that's for more than one person on here. That's for at least 10 people on here. I'm just saying, you need to claim that for yourself. Does does the wolf, I claim that with you in Jesus' name. Wow. I claim that with you in Jesus' name. I Prophet, I've, I've got I got it the a word that that th this one hurts a little bit oh. um and and i and i don't really want anybody to answer unless they just feel fully unctioned by god to answer this because because the kingdom of god is not a place for embarrassment that's right but but, but, but god is laying on my heart a a situation right now of a b abusive relationship and and that abusive relationship is is, is between your you and your husband and I, I'm, I've even seen you flung into French doors, and and I'm I'm seeing those those little wood pieces of the French doors uh, breaking off because you hit the closet so hard. Uh, I'm seeing that that you you have uh, almost got hit by a car because of your husband's rage. Mm. And God is saying right now in this hour, I'm working on his heart. This is a this is a celebratory vision that God has given me because God is working on him because now he is probably from what I'm seeing is crunched up somewhere either in bed uh, maybe outside on the patio and and he is sitting right now and he's I see him clenching his chest. No, shoot. <laughs> And and I'm I'm seeing him rocking back and forth just like this, and he's asking himself, "Why am I angry all the time? Come on, why am I hurting all the time? What's wrong with me?" And I, and I'm starting to see that the Holy Spirit is is falling mm. in. It's almost that his his whole body's black, mm. and that the Holy Spirit is entering from the top of his head. And, and it's, I'm starting to see that it, as farther it goes down, that there's light that's starting to be shown. Yes. And he's starting to realize that, that his life is really good and he has no reason to be upset. He has no reason to be mad and angry all the time. And he just doesn't understand why it's happening. Shoot. I don't mean to get emotional, but I'm feeling every bit of it. <laughs> But God is telling you tonight that I'm working on him. And you are going to start seeing changes in him yes. suddenly. And you are starting to see that he's going to start yes. talking to you a little bit better. He's going to start doing nicer things for you. Don't be surprised if you don't have roses at, at your work or at your house within the next couple of days. Thank you, Jesus. He is going to do nice things for you. And then, then the next thing that I'm seeing is I see that, that you and him are in church together. I see yeah. that he's wearing a blazer with a T-shirt and a pair of jeans. And he's in church with you. And he's crying. He's, he's, he's broken. And I, I'm seeing God feeling him. And filling his body. And God is, is delivering him from all that rage and all that anger. And all that, that the mean words that he said to you. You're being healed right now of the verbal right now. 
The Holy Spirit is working with you right now with the verbal. You are going to see restoration in your marriage. And don't be surprised if. He's the one that initiates prayer at night. <laughs> oh, <me. laughs> oh, we thank you, God. Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> thank you, Jesus. Mm, God. I think several people are crying, not just me, you, and I heard your wife crying too, in her seat. <laughs> Yeah, she's right next to me. I just... <laughs> It's just it's it's when when God gives you that vivid of a of a vision. Yeah. It's all it's to the mm. fact that you can feel what's taking place in those people's lives, and 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 God help us, <laughs> and, and 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 me as a man, God help us if we're not taking care of of our of our wives, as as we as we're supposed to as the church. Mm. Come on, men, check your hearts tonight. I, I'm just I'm just gonna go right with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Check your hearts tonight. When's the last time you sat down and prayed with your wife? Come mm, on. When's the last time you sat down and and you looked at your <laughs> wife and you said, "I thank God for you." When's the last time you grabbed her by the hand and said, "Let's pray together." Wow. Come on. Jesus. Men, Jesus. get let's get it. Let let's start taking care of our queens again. Let's start. Let's start showing this generation that that doesn't care about marriage. Let's start showing them what marriage is about. Let's start showing that. Yes. Stop. Let's start showing it. Ah. <laughs> Holy God. Mm. Mm. I don't want to disturb this, but mm -hmm. I also, if you have something else on that same thing, let me know. I wanted to address uh, some of the women who, when they heard, you know, they're hearing this word, but their relationship is already. Right, sure. Yes, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> they're feeling a little jealous. Yeah. I wanted to know why. Not that they don't want another person's relationship restored. They do, but they're like, well, what about me? Why? 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 Mm. Why? Mm. Come on. Oh, Jesus. We're just going to pray right now. Yes. That Jesus. one, you continue to be happy for other people. But two, that God comes in and he heals that and that it does not become a bitterness. And for... Yeah. There are like four women on here that I know it's already become a bitter thing. Doesn't take root. Okay. It became a bitter root. Amy and Deanna. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's good. Thank you. You're welcome to get the picture with him. <laughs> Your husband. Y'all are one. Um, and so that's what I'm seeing, you know, and you're gonna have to I see the Lord. You know, in some situations, he'll pluck a root out. But in this situation, he's going to have you vomit up oh. a huge tree. You it's tried huge. to cut the tree off, but now the stump and the roots are there, and it's just going to grow right back. You literally have to go through letting God come in and allowing yeah. you, letting him press you so hard that it's almost like a queasy, sick feeling. And you're going to have to vomit the tree stump and the roots up. Oh, and forgive and even forgive God, although he didn't do anything wrong. He did not intervene in how you thought he should have because he gives people free will. He talked to them and he talked to them and it was not his heart that they do what they did, but it's done. Okay. And now He's working on you to heal you. 
And so, Father, Father God, we just thank you right now. Please, we literally are pressed in a loving manner by you, and they vomit up yes. Yes. on your lap that tree yes. roots with all of its roots, with all of its fruits, with all of its anything, because the fruit of that kind of a tree is up down into the grass. You know, it's hidden. A lot of times, you can hide it from people. Oh, she's doing so well after that divorce. Mm -hmm. like, so well after he remarried. Look at her; she's doing so well. And on the inside, you know. Why? You know, but you get it real well. God's pressing you privately, and you get to vomit that up on the lap of Jesus. And it's okay to be exposed and to vomit on your husband's lap. Jesus is that way for us. You know, daily when I get into worship with the Lord, He does that with me. I sometimes more than one time a day, He'll show me a thing, and He goes, "Let's work on that and vomit that up." And especially the first time I remember vomiting on Jesus' lap, I was like, that is disgusting. It was in a vision. And I said, ew, I'd apologize, but you seem happy about it. You know? <laughs> so it's a good thing. Jesus does not care if you, if you cry, you scream, you rant, you rave. And then at the end of it, when he settles you down and you begin to weep and cry, the vomit comes and you get to give it to him. And it's no longer a part of you. We just decree and declare that over your life right now. No more pain. No more woundedness. <clears throat> My husband just said, why does it always have to be the man? Why can't the woman take charge? Say Make that sure. again. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Somebody commented. A Kendra commented. My husband just said, why does it always have to be the man? Why can't the women take charge? Dear Jesus, help just to be real. Men are the spiritual head of the household. Come on. Yeah. That's and, right. and, and that's and and it's the particular thing that the Holy Spirit was unctioning me about was about us as men as being the spiritual head, and and that it doesn't mean any you know anything different other than the fact that that we are supposed to be the spiritual heads of our household and we are supposed to be the ones that are rooted firmly in our household with the spiritual part of our of our marriage and our family. So we are the ones that that our family needs to look to for that spiritual guidance. And mm -hmm. I know that when my kids, they're hard to get up, they know that whether or not they want to get up or not, they're getting up and they're going to church. <laughs> That's right. And, and it's, and it's not the fact that we're just picking on men. Well, actually we're not picking on anything. So that's Holy Ghost that's talking, but, but come on, just like, I mean, women too need to need to check their hearts as well in the marriage and do that. But I'm speaking from what the Holy Spirit has unctioned to me to say. Uh, now, if I get a word about women in a marriage, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to do that and in, in, in a drop of a hat. But but it's God is unctioning out the fact that that we need to step in as a spiritual head and we need to take charge of that. So when when the enemy comes in, tries to come into your home and attack you. You are the one that is rooted firmly. Come on. And you are the one that is rooted right into the ground of the Holy Spirit. And you're the one that looks at those at that enemy and says, not in my house. Get back behind me in Jesus name. So. So make sure that don't don't please don't misconstrue that because it's it's you know, there there's different words for different days. It's just for us guys today was that word. So so that that's the big yes. thing there. Yes. Well, uh, your your vision was about the woman who was being yeah. abused. Yeah. Yeah. And and coming from an independent single woman for over forty years, relinquishing the spiritual head of this home was hard for me. But I know that that's biblical. That he is the spiritual head of this home, and I even as early or as late as last night after church service I we we had a conversation and I said you need to check me you need to check me when this happens again and and make sure that I'm alive um because we were not on the same sink and we needed to be and I and I said to him I was like you need to check me so that I can be aligned with you as the spiritual head of this home come on come on hey. and see that doesn't mean ladies and I do want to express this it doesn't mean gentlemen or ladies, number one, you get to have your say. Both parties get to have their yes. say. Yes, very much. At the end of the conversation, for the sake of peace and unity, unless it is direct physical violence, abuse, or killing a person, the man has the say because somebody has to take the lead. And God purposed 
the man take the lead. Now, if he's wrong, ladies, what do you do? You take it to God in prayer. Some things don't yeah. matter. You know, I had somebody call me once something silly. It would almost be like they contacted me and, um, this wasn't the situation, it'd be, but it'd be like if they're like, they just made me cook brown gravy instead of chicken gravy with chicken. <laughs> and I'm like, well, my gosh, at the end of the day, 40 years from now, may the worst thing in your marriage be that you had to do brown gravy with chicken instead of chicken gravy. Pray <laughs> Jesus. Do the brown gravy and get over it. You know, because it was just like, but then it put her in perspective and she was like, oh, I didn't look at it like that. I said, yeah, are you seriously going to cause a fight in your marriage? over something that silly just cook the brown gravy you know that was not the situation but that's how trivial it was that once yeah. you know that's why you got to be discipled that's why you need somebody who you can run something by and you know they don't take up an offense with you at your husband they get you back on track and go well that's just kind of you know what would be the harm in that if you do what he says what would be the harm in it i mean it's not like he said get in your car and drive off a cliff you and the kids you know, it's not like he said, light yourself on fire. It was something, you know, that it doesn't matter. In the scheme of things, just do it. Yeah. Whoopee. And I think in uh, modern day America, that has been some problem with women. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Where you are just wanting to fight tooth and nail on the silliest little thing. Yeah. Try to always keep Come your marriage long-term focused. When it comes to any type of disagreement type things, you take, you step back and you go, in the scheme of things, 40 years from now, is, is it going to matter if my daughter gets the pink um, hat or if daddy wants to get her the camouflage green one? <laughs> Does it really, in the scheme of things, matter? No, just get her the camouflage green one. Let's go on. <laughs> you know what? Whoopee. I mean, you wouldn't believe the things people will bring to me sometimes, and I'm like, in the scheme of it, 40 years from now, do you really want to be holding over your husband's head that he he was such a generous man, he was buying his own children something anyway, but do you really want to go so far as he bought uh -huh. camouflage instead of pink? I mean, think on it. So women, we're just going to have to do what? We're going to have to take the low road. We're going to have to, and it's for protection. And it's not being stomped on. Come on, it's more like this. When you humble yourself and do what God wants you to do, you stand behind your man. Okay? You stand yeah. behind him. And so when things come, God made it to where his shoulders can carry that weight. And you're you're behind him helping. So if something does get a little bit weight-bearing, and this is another thing I was telling, you can hold him up. This is something that I had seen. I, I hope you don't mind me sharing this part of the word. It had to do with him and his wife. We were talking in the messenger. And I said, you know what? I'm seeing you and your wife. I'm seeing how you have tucked her up and under, you know, your arms. You've tucked her up and under your wings. You've tucked her in there, and she's allowing that. But it also is because if she's tucked up and under, wives, hear me. If you're tucked up and under your husband's arms and his wings, guess what? You're there to support his arms. Yep. When he's praying, when he's worshiping, when he's pushing, when he's coming home from a bad day at work, you can go, oh, my goodness, but maybe you've had a day. But you can turn that off for a minute, and he does, you know, you can't fix it where he's at, but you can be the listening ear and go, oh, my gosh, baby, yeah, yeah, and pray for him. Amen. Just give him Amen. a hug. Maybe he just wants you to just... Stop cooking on the stove, turn the burners down, and for like two or three minutes, just turn around, ignore the kids, you've been there all day with them, or who knows what, and just throw your arms around him, and just hold him. Yep. In that minute, you might need to be, even though you're not his mama, in that minute, you might need to be a mommy, so to speak, and just let him, okay? And that's I'm okay. On. That's okay. I don't know how we got off into this, and I'm a single woman, I need... I don't need a man, that's true, I don't need one, but I would like, you know, the kingdom connection that God has for me to push um, the kingdom throughout the earth, um, and that desire has been in my heart, you know, and so for that to be there, I really believe that God has authored that, so um, that's a prayer request. <laughs> well, Prophet, I, I decree and declare right now that God is preparing you Amen. a a leader in your life. Amen. Amen. That 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 will that will take a hold of you 
and that 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 man will be of such God that that when you see him, it's like he's got a target right on his forehead, and you're like, that's him, <laughs> that's him, and he is got he is gonna have an anointing <laughs> so strong. That, that he is going to take nations because of, of the anointing that God has laid upon his life. And you two together will be a powerhouse for the kingdom of God. And that you will have years of happiness. That you will have years of good health. And you will have longevity in, in that future marriage and relationship. I claim that. I decree and declare that over your life in Jesus' name. I receive that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I receive that. I receive that. I received that. Amen. 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 <laughs> I, 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 for some reason, it, it cracks me up that the Holy Spirit gives me these weird words in certain visions, and and I'm like, where did that target on his forehead? I'm like, where did that even come from? But but it's uh, it, it's trust me, I have to tell you sometime that there's some some things that God's laid on my heart, and I'm sitting here going, did I really just say that? Um, so. <laughs> I've said strange things to people where God gave me a sentence and he said, say that to this individual. And I'm like, number one, I'm like, that's a leader. You know, years ago, especially, I was like, Preach. <laughs> well, I'm just going to say last year, I, there was an awesome, uh, okay, here's an example. Uh, the Sumrals are my spiritual parents and God had me walk up to him and say, he just, number one, first thing God said was go tell him my testimony. I'm not going to get into what I said him said to him per se, but I walked up to him and I said, God healed me of rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm thinking I'm going off into my testimony. And then I said like three other sentences. And, and I was like, that was not you. I was like, thinking about the Holy Spirit, you tricked me. That was, I cannot believe this. This man may think I'm a lunatic or something. What on earth? Well, he didn't praise God. And uh, <laughs> it made sense to him. But when it came out my mouth, I'm sitting there listening to it going, oh, God in heaven. <laughs> oh, God in heaven. You know, so when God gives you a word and you're sitting there and you, you know, just go, just lean back in the Lord and say, well, you're either going to correct me or this was indeed you. So help Absolutely. me, God. You know, but just be bold and say it. Because there have been times where I've yeah. said, and I'm sure you've said things to people and it's like, <gasps> Yeah. All right. I'm like, I hope that means something. I really do. I really do. <laughs> and it does. It usually, you know, it means something to them. Amy Moss target. No, wait, <laughs> I send y'all a picture a few weeks from now with a man with a target on his head. No, I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> so, so, somebody, somebody get to writing that. Um, uh, one thing I do want to do as well, uh, Prophet is is I, I want to pray over you yeah. uh, and honor you uh, because uh, because you have you have given you know uh, an opportunity for me to come on here with you and 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 like like I told you earlier you know even though platforms I mean you know platforms are are to glorify God and that's yeah. what we've done here tonight we we have glorified God we have we have not quenched the spirit we have listened to the spirit of God and we have delivered the message that God has wanted to bring forth but I, I want to I want to honor you and and I want to be able to also pray about your the conference that's coming up uh, oh, in Texas yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to pray over that um, because it's it is going to be a to me a powerhouse conference yeah. and I and I mean just you know not just because you and Daniel is going to be there but but it's but everybody that's involved and, and I want to pray for that as well. And so if, if you'll stretch your hands, Prophet, um, I'm gonna let Deanna come in with me as well. Uh, say hi to my beautiful my beautiful queen, everybody. Um, and and I and also I want everybody that's watching with us to join in prayer as well, uh, because we do need to lift up uh, Prophet Tiffany. And, and we need to make sure that, that God continues to use her in the way that he is using her. And uh, so, so let's, let's pray. And if you don't feel like praying yourself, pray in spirit. Because, I mean, what better way than to send it to heaven? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, God, for, for this evening. We thank you, God, for, for the miracles, the healings, the deliverance, uh, the answered prayers. Uh, the salvations, God, we thank you for, for this time in yes. your glory, God. It, it is, thank you for hiding me and Tiffany behind the cross. 
and, and for allowing your will to speak forth and not us. I ask God that you will continue to lay your anointing upon your prophet. Yeah, I pray God right now that you will enhance her ministry tenfold because not only of her obedience, but because of the way that she listens to you, Lord. And God, I ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that, that her, her life expands on all areas and all formats. I pray, God, that you will speak within her a word that she's not spoken before. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will give her a voice that she has never spoken before. And I plead the blood of Jesus over that voice because that voice is going to speak to more and more and more and more Ugh. as she continues throughout her ministry. I pray, God, right now that you will protect her, you will keep a cover ah. over her, and you will continue to let her bring forth the word that you will deliver. Woo! And, God, that you will allow her to continue through you to change lives, to see healings, to yeah. see deliverances, to see salvations, and to see people's lives changed on an everyday basis. I pray right now, as God, that the anointing is falling upon her, God, that, that she's not had before. Give her a new thing in this season, God. Give her that new beginning as we're breaking into August, God. Give her that new beginning that is going to take her to new heights. Well, I, I see her right now ascending in the spirit. I see her ascending. And God, let her ascend to that new realm, God, that you can allow her to see clear. You can allow her to hear clear. And you allow her to speak clearer than ever before. And I pray right now for this conference in Texas. I pray for her and Daniel and everyone that is going to be involved in this conference. That God, that the mighty, just power of God will fall in Texas. God, that, that the people there will be so shook by the power of the Holy Spirit that no one will leave that place changed other than other than being changed by you, God, that, that there will be a changing of people, that people will leave there with gifts that they have never activated before. God, I plead that right now. I pray that out of that situation that you will rise prophets, that you will rise apostles, that you will rise pastors, you will rise evangelists, you will arise teachers in Jesus' name through the people that you have put in that position to give your word, God. Shoot. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm. God, I thank you for I thank you for your prophet. I thank you. We honor her. We I I honor I honor her in such a way, God, that that she is is truly one of the most humble people I've ever met. And I thank you for that. I thank you for humble people of God that still just want to do your will and they just want to yes, seek Lord. your presence. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you so much thank for, for this time. And, and I, I just thank you for, for being able to, to speak to people and seeing people's lives change tonight. Lord, move forth and let your, let your glory even continue after this live broadcast yes. goes to a replay. God, I, I thank you also for allowing our apostle to show up tonight and, and, uh, and his, his wife, apostle. I pray, pray, God, that you will plead the blood of Jesus over their life and that as, as he speaks uh, with uh, Apostle G in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, that your power and glory will fall just as, as well in that area and allow people's lives to be changed there, God. I just thank you again for all this, and I thank you for, for Tiffany and what she's going to do for the kingdom in this season. We plead the blood of Jesus, and we thank you for all of it. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, I bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Shoot. That's what it does. Shoot. Well, it's it's our honor, and, and it's uh, that's what we need in the kingdom. We need we need more people honoring our, our leaders in Christ. Amen. And, and that is uh, that is the main thing that we need. We need people honoring people, and, and it's it's something that that I think that God's going to check our heart in this season about. I really do. Amen. Amen. Um, I'll leave a comment. So anyone who feels led can bless. Um, uh, Pastor Brian and his wife. Um, or if you'd like to sew into the trip that I'm taking to Texas. Yes. Free to do. I, I, I would, I would rather that everybody sew into this trip for Tiffany. Uh, I, I,
I will go ahead and tell you right now. I, I'll do the first. Uh, I'll do the first sewing. <laughs> if anybody wants to follow yeah. right behind me, bless y'all. So, so that it's 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 about mm. uh, it's about sowing into the kingdom, and and one day, if if so willing that God calls us to do a conference, then then maybe one day, maybe one day that. But but I, I want to sow into this conference. I, I want to sow into what. God is going to do for it and, and what God's going to, to bring forth and birth out of, out of this, out of this situation. So. Amen. 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 I see so many awesome, wonderful people on here and it feels so hard to part. I love yes. Yes. <laughs> this. This is going to sound really wild and crazy. I have seriously thought about having a video one night that started like, uh, at 11 o'clock at night and go into like four or five in the morning with different flash uh, prophets or pastors or something doing flash like mob, a, flash mob, yes. prophet and the prophet oh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's quite birthed there yet, but it's a, it's an idea. And I'm like, when Lord, when? So we'll see. Amen. Amen. We'll be praying for that. <laughs> uh, but you <laughs> definitely at some point in the future, uh, I need to have y'all both back on again. I love Anytime. y'all. So Anytime. Good. We love you. Um, well, we're going to get off of here, you guys. Love y'all. Let me see if I can find the uh, finish button. And, uh, <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. See you guys. Bless you all. Thank Bless you so you. much. Bye.